Good evening. Welcome to Brigham Town Council meeting, Wednesday, December 15th. Would someone from council please read the acknowledgement? Councilor Wayne. Today I acknowledge that the town of Bruderheim is located on the Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis Nation of Alberta. The town of Bruderheim honors the first peoples of this land. We recognize that we stand upon land that carries the footsteps of Cree, Métis, and Blackfoot, amongst other nations, who have been here for thousands of years. Therefore, the town of Bruderheim has an inherent responsibility to foster healthier, healthier relationships with first peoples and further the calls to action as outlined by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Thank you, Councillor Wayne. So we'll call this meeting to order at 7.03 p.m. Is there any additions, deletions, or changes to the agenda? Mr. Mayor, administration has one. An addition, 8.9, the Alberta Community Partnership Grant application. And what's it for? Yep, I know, but what's the grant for? Mr. Mayor, that it's for the um, Regional Infrastructure Assessment Project. Thank you. Is there anything from uh, Council for changes to the agenda? Okay, not hearing any, I look for a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Please. Deputy Mayor Judy. And Deputy Mayor Judy makes the motion to adopt agenda as presented. There's something wrong with your mic right at the moment. Thank you. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Hearing none, call for vote. Anyone opposed to the motion to adopt the agenda as presented? As, as amended, sorry. And the motion's carried. And we move on to number six, 6.1, adopt minutes of December 1st, 2021, regular meeting of council. Do we have a motion from council to adopt that minutes? And Councillor Dana? I motion that we adopt the minutes. Um, 6.1, adopt minutes of December 1st, 2021, regular meeting of council. Thank you, Councillor Dana. Any comments, questions, or concerns from council with that motion? Okay, uh, hearing none, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to that motion? And the motion's carried. And we move on to council priorities. Number seven, uh, information request 7.1. We'll start with Deputy Mayor G. Um, I have nothing. You're going to stand here and do this for me. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councillor Dino. Nothing at this moment. Thank you. Councillor Len. Nothing at this time. Thank you, Councillor Wynn. Nothing at this time. Councillor Ashley. Um, if we could investigate adding additional lighting and crushed stone or any anti-slip material on the right side of the arena between the main doors and the player's entrance. I've uh, received multiple complaints regarding the lack of lighting and icy conditions as the access through the building has been denied. Okay, um, administration, is that clear where uh, Ashley's talking about? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, and just a point of clarity, access is not denied. It's just exiting the building is there right now because of the pandemic, right? They have to go through. That's the door you're talking about, the side door? Yeah. Um, it's between, it's on this side. So this is the main door of the arena, and this is the player's entrance here. So the parents before used to come from the stands through that side door to go to the players, but now they have to come this way. Right. So there's a path between the main door and the player's exit that people are using and it's not very well lit oh and it's pretty icy it's a good thing i asked for clarification i thought you were talking about the west door so thank you okay thank you very much uh, Councilor ashley anything else okay uh, Councilor george 
Yes. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to, I was wondering if we could get some more information on uh, our snow removal within the town. Uh, there's been quite a bit of complaints as to our methods and when and how we're doing things. Uh, I think that we could be doing things a little bit better. Mr. Mayor, I'll ask the Director of Infrastructure Services to address. Thank you. Alan? So, sorry, uh, Mr. Mayor, through the Councilor Campbell, could you just repeat that? There, I, there's sort of like a three-parter there. That <clears throat> Well, uh, after talking to you here a day or so ago and getting some more information, uh, uh, I come to the conclusion that there's some things, maybe we can do things a little bit more efficient, uh, time-wise, expense-wise, and uh, uh, a little bit more economically. I was a, was wondering if somebody could do some research into that uh, and come back with some answers at our next meeting. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, through Council Campbell, so you're looking for, are you wanting to know how the operations, I'm, I apologize, you're looking to see how we operate, like how long it's taking us or? or? Well, it's efficiencies due to manpower, equipment, okay. whether it's more efficient to, to use our own systems, or is it more efficient and uh, to um, to um, uh, contract out? Uh, we have to do something with this uh, because, in the long term, I don't know what our costs per hour is to maintain our own equipment, our own staff, and um, and uh, repairs and all this here as con uh, as uh, uh, compared to contracting. Um, we talk about budgeting, we talk about uh, keeping within our line of costs. <clears throat> so uh, this is something that we, uh, I'm looking at, from, looking at for information. How can we be more cost efficient, more efficient in our, how we do things? I'm not laying any, or pointing any fingers at the Department of Public Works. They do a wonderful job. But uh, I think uh, as council, we have to start looking at more efficiencies. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Mr. Mayor, through the Councilor Campbell, so I can I can tell you time-wise and somewhat some dollars that are attached to what your question is. So um, right now, currently for public works, uh, when we do, if we go historically, what we've done for the town, we have started in one area, usually typically we start in either West Woodlands or Brookside, we all take turns back and forth. In the past, we use contractor trucks um, to assist us in doing the snow removal. Um, typically it takes us five days to do the town from, if we say we start Monday morning, we are completed by Friday afternoon. The town is done, that, that's done. Those costs are approximately $2,000 a day um, for contractors, that's trucks that we use rough give or take a, a couple hundred dollars right now for the town to do what uh, you had talked to me about uh, last week was so for us to do the town it currently would take us so we did everything but the collectors in 17 days you'd have or sorry in 13 days it would take us roughly 17 to 18 days for us to do the town with our own equipment one truck two pieces of equipment and I think we've all, I've heard you guys in the past, uh, bringing this up in past council meetings, always keeping in mind that in the winter time, in 18 days, a lot can happen. So we have a priority listing, that's P1s through P5s. Our priority ones are arterial routes, that's 52nd, Main Street, 48th. Our P2s are collectors, that is the main drags that run through Sunset, Westwood Lands, Old Town, and also Brookside. And I think you all have had that map. If you don't, it is on our website. Uh, please review it. Um, P4s are residential. Those are the ones that I think that everybody, uh, and I, I wanna, I'll provide a little bit of clarity around the P4s because I've, I've 
myself and my staff, I, I see we social media wise, we took a little bit of a beating there, but I think it was more so not understanding exactly what we do versus perhaps other towns. And I just want to clarify that for not only the, the public, but for council. Um, P4s, the policy is 15 centimeters path. That means path, not accumulated. The difference between P4s and P1s and 2s or P1s and 2s are 10 centimeters accumulated. So we could be working on P4s and all of a sudden we get 10 centimeters of snow, off we go back to P1s and P2s because the policy says 10 centimeters accumulated. P4s, which is our res rest of our residential areas, are 15 centimeters packed. And that, that's for a reason, because if we had to keep going out at 10 centimeters accumulated, you can imagine what those costs and how quickly they would rise um, due to contracting costs and, and even in-house. So we would it would be a revolving door. One thing to keep in note is not only does public works do snow removal, we have a, a variety of other responsibilities in town. We have a water and sewer system to operate. We have town buildings to maintain. We have an arena that takes up this year for me, probably 60 to 70% of my time. So there is a lot of different moving parts with public works other than just snow removal. So if we were to just dedicate ourselves to snow removal, it would be very difficult to mitigate the other challenges that we have day to day. So does that help you out a little bit with what those time frames look like? Oh, it is up to us to make a decision as to what we want to do to help you be able to do your, your task more efficiently and more at a cost, more at a... And Mr. Mayor, through the Councilor Campbell, Public Works uh, and administration is following the policy. And uh, I, I just want to step back here. I did say something about some other towns and I'm not going to name the towns, but one of the one of the big factors for other towns, um, you know, if we take a look at some towns to the east, their roads are done. A lot of a lot of uh, comparisons were made to from Brudeheim to other towns. There's a big difference to what we do to what they do. And I'm not saying they do it better. I'm not saying we do it better. Those towns roads are cleared, cleared. So what I mean is they are snow cleared, not snow removed. They move the wind rows to the outside, roads are done. They are done. Town of Verdeheim, if we went into a snow clearing, uh, providing vehicles and what have you, we could be done in a day as well. But that's snow clearing. There are, there are adverse effects to snow clearing. There's positives to snow clearing, but it's all about the cost. So in this case, council has made a policy to remove snow. This is what we're adhering to. For us to, if we were to clear it, we could meet, sure, we would have those, those roads that the other towns are saying are done, done, but we don't, we have snow removal. That takes time. Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Campbell, just as a reminder to the residential roads that we just did, actually did not meet policy, um, but because it was such an unusual ice snow situation that we got, we used our own equipment. If there was a condition where the snow was impeding emergency vehicle right, uh, access, we would definitely hire a contractor and get that out. But um, because the snow ice, snow ice, an unusual weather event that we did, we chose to exceed policy for priority force and go along. And as you know, West Woodlands was almost melted by the time we got there. Um, we made the decision just to scrape and um, used our own equipment. So lots of uh, different variables. Also want to remind council two years ago, we increased by council request the amount of snow accumulation and packed snow before we activated removal. So that was two years ago. We increased by approximately five centimeters, I believe. So that was a change in service levels too. Is there something we can do to remove this snow haul and implement snow clear? Uh, is there places in our town where we can possibly uh, uh, initiate this action uh, cost wise and efficiency wise? So Mr. Mayor, through Council Campbell, I've been on a number of pilots. As we all know, City of Fort Saskatchewan is one that does uh, snow clearing and they take out a sidewalk every year and a boulevard. Um, it's up to Council. If you wanted to do a test pilot in an area, um, I can tell you from my experience when I was involved in some pilots, it's very difficult to downgrade service levels, but totally up to Council. If they want to give us a direction to do a test pilot in a certain area, absolutely could. Thank you, Councillor George. Councillor Wayne. 
just when, when you're talking there, just for um, understanding for residents that are watching and for maybe the new counselors that don't know what P12345 are, can you just give a kind of a, what you mean by that? Okay, Mr. Mayor, through the counselor, a lot cool. I did, but okay. Um, so P1s are arterials. So that's 52nd West and East, Queen Street, North and South, 48th Avenue, East and West, Highway 45 or 204, Range Road going uh, north past the school. Those are our arterials. P2s are our collectors. P2s are on 55th Street going south uh, from 52nd all the way to uh, 48th. That one drag there in West Woodlands. Sunset is, uh, you're going to get me on these addresses. So right, just, it's, just kind of yeah, so Sunset, there's one main collector. It's a route that would be one that gets you into all the residences, right? So it, we call that a collector. It's a main drive or main route. Um, in Brookside, it would be the outer ring of Brookside, which is either 47th or 54th, because it turns. That's the outer ring. That's a collector. P3s are our trails and, uh, sorry, and sidewalks. Sorry. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> Um, and P4s are the rest of the residential streets. So that's everything from 52nd all the way to 48th and everything in Brookside other than the collectors. That's the rest of the residential. <clears throat> um, and P5s are alleys, which rarely we get to. I did, uh, when I say I, we managed to get some of the alleys done um, during that rainstorm. Uh, I can tell you that the greater struggled even with that, with the ice blades on. There was a lot of, a lot of ice. So um that we would get sp5s mr mayor through councillor leco if i could just add to that um the classification of p1 to p55 is based on traffic counts so that's why uh p1s and p2s are done ahead of count because there's more traffic yeah no it's just it's just for clarification so they know what that meant when you're talking p123 as well thank you thank you councillor wayne um i i just wanted to add that over the years the it seems every winter when we get a large snowfall, uh, the issue of snow clearing comes up and the policy comes back to council to review and possibly make changes and maybe uh, the policy could come back and we can take another look at it. Um, as far as the snow clearing, we've had uh, large snow uh, dumps in the past, like I'm talking more than just a couple of years ago, where the snow clearing was done and uh, there was large um, well, what's the proper word for them? Windrows, yes, in, in the middle of the street left, and that did not go very well. Um, people ended up driving over top of it and uh, caused a lot of issues. And so uh, I would caution when we're thinking about doing snow clearing, it depends on how the snow clearing is being done. Is it going to leave windrows in the middle of the street or is it going to the side? That There's some real thought has to go into what we would do, but it'd be interesting to bring the policy back and um, see what other communities are doing and if we can tune it up. But I, I know that over the years, every winter, when we get a significant amount of snow, snow clearing always comes up. Having said that, in the past, when we've had significant dumps where the uh, passage for emergency vehicles becomes an issue and we get contractors in and the snow clearing gets done quickly, then everybody is like, hooray, you did it really fast. Well, there's a cost to that, right? Thank you. So um, moving along um, for information requests um, um, for myself, I have one question. We had asked for a letter for uh, the province for the ATB issue and just wondering where that's at. Okay, thank you very much because I don't remember signing it. I, I, I just sent it in last week. Okay, thank you. Um, and now moving along with program requests, we'll start with Councillor George. Nothing at this time, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ashley? Nothing at this time. Councillor Wayne? Nothing at this time. Councillor Len? Nothing at this time. Councillor Dana? Nothing at this time. Thank you. Councillor Judy? Or, sorry, Deputy Mayor Judy? Nothing at this time. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Judy. Um, just wanted to uh, say a big thank you to administration for lining up Santa coming to the arena this coming Saturday. That should be exciting for the boys and girls. Thank you. Um, 
moving past council priorities, I'm going to number 8.1, bylaw 13, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Administration would like to present the 2022 user fees and charges to council for consideration. The council gives second reading to bylaw 13-2021, a bylaw to impose the user fees and charges for 2022. The town council give third reading to bylaw 13-2021, a bylaw to impose the user fees and charges for 2022. User fees are a critical element of a municipality's revenue source. Together with the government transfers and property taxation, they represent a portion of the town's revenue stream. The fees and charges bylaw establishes rates, fees, and charges payable for municipal services provided by the town. Administration reviews the fees and charges annually with challenging times experienced with the pandemic. The 2021 revenues were considered considerably lower than expected. There were also administrative updates completed to enhance transparency and reflect current operational practices. The first reading of the bylaw was presented on December 1st, 2021. Strategic plan areas. The user fee and charges bylaw ensures that not only the residents of today, but customers of the town are also contributing to the cost to provide town services. Sustainable infrastructure, continue to develop and plan needs of the community, healthy, vibrant community, continue to enhance and create new relationships with service groups by offering reduced rates for town services to nonprofit organizations. Ensure that the community is also aware of the fees and charges for services offered by the town. Other impacts, legislative, MGA Chapter M26, Section 8, powers under bylaws, allows council to pass a bylaw for the establishment and collection of fees for services provided by the town. This past year, administration continues to focus on reviews of our policies, bylaws, and our website. The user fees and charges Schedule A was revamped in 2021 to align the charges with the department that they relate to, to clarify for staff, residents, and potential developers. We have documented throughout 2021 issues that have arose from the rewrite and the 2022 user fees and charges reflect those identified issues. One of the significant changes is the removal of local and non-local rates to our ice rental fees. Our community has seen the growth of our service borders in the past five years and we are supported by the people living within those borders. The economic benefit of adult teams playing in our community is greatly appreciated by our local businesses. In 2021, the utility fee schedule saw a significant rewrite, and we advised council that it should take a few years to calculate the exact rate to account for expenses. Unfortunately, the sewer expenses are projected to be approximately 68,000 over the sewer revenue for 2021. This shortfall will make up the second significant change to user fees and charges for 2022. The proposed flat fee, sewer flat fee increase of $4 per household per month will bring the revenue closer to the actual expenses of providing sewer services to the community. We are projecting another increase to sewer rates in 2023 based on the 2021 water consumption rates. The fees and charges will come to effect on January 1st, 2022. Upon final reading, the bylaw will be placed on the town website and advertised on social media accounts. That's everything, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that. So we're looking for a motion from Council for the second reading to bylaw 13 2021. Councillor George. I make a motion that Council give second reading to bylaw 13 2021, a bylaw to impose the user fees and charges for 2022. Councillor George. <laughs> Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Councillor Wayne. I just have a question in regards to an item in uh, the fees and charges, if I may. Absolutely. Um, uh, where are we? The residential curbside pickup on page 10, I believe. It says residential curbside service includes one recycling cart 795. Yes. So the 795, that's the rate everybody pays, except for seniors, they get a discounted rate, right? That's correct. So this, this, the seniors over 65, they pay $1.68. That's correct. And then we pay 406. So the difference between those, that number and the regular rate is. Two dollars and twenty-one cents. Who pays that? Between the four hundred six and the one sixty-eight. Yeah, because that doesn't equal seven ninety-five. So I'm wondering oh, where that so, difference. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Leco, uh, GFL actually subsidizes the seniors as well. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you. I didn't realize that. Yeah. 
Awesome. Thank you. Sorry, I should make it clear. No, that's okay. Thanks. That's good news. Thank you for the question, Councillor Wayne. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? I just wanted to highlight something that I learned about the uh, City of Edmonton hockey, uh, or sorry, ice time rates. So a friend of mine, uh, his team rents ice in Edmonton. <clears throat> they are charged $309 an hour and that's GST included. And uh, so it, like I know, I know we're uh, staying competitive with uh, our fellow municipalities, but I think it behooves us to every year uh, pay attention to what the rates are doing because um, we're certainly getting a great deal in Bitterham for our ice time. When uh, I think the proposed is increases up to $150 an hour. Is that correct? Yeah, so that's what I thought, 150. So um, I, I don't think uh, too many folks can complain about the cost of our ice time per hour in Bruderheim. Any other comments or questions on the user fees and charges motion? Okay, I'll we'll call for a vote then. Anyone opposed to the motion? Hearing none, that motion is carried. And uh, we move on to the next motion. Um, the third reading is for the same bylaw. Would someone be willing to come? Deputy Mayor Judy. Make a motion that town council give third reading to bylaw 13, 2021, a bylaw to impose the user fees and charges for 2022. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns for uh, council? Um, is there anything from an administration that you'd like to highlight before uh, we move to pass this uh, bylaw? Nothing from an Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. So if there's nothing further from our council, then uh, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the third reading to bylaw 13-2021 for the user fees and charges for 22? And motion's carried. So now we move on to 8.2 2022 recommended interim operating budget. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Administration would like to just review publicly the flagged items from the November 17th presentation of the recommended 2022 interim operating budget. Uh, council was provided with those e via email and paper copy in the package. So flag item number one, uh, that administration provide the breakdown of taxes collected between residential and commercial properties in the town of Bruderheim. Uh, the response to that question is currently the town of Bruderheim receives 12% of its tax revenue from commercial and industrial assessment and 88% of its tax revenue from residential assessment. Any comments from council, Mr. Mayor? Um, More Councilor clarity. Wayne has a question. I know last year, a few years back, we talked about how um, tax rates for both commercial and residential are the same here and that we talked about uh, possibly looking at going forward to have uh, a different rate for commercial and residential but it may not be an instant thing maybe we set something where in two years we start something and slowly increase it um, is that something that we should look at now or is that something we should look at after the fact or after budgeting is done uh, Mr. Mayor, we could look at that at the tax rate bylaw time. Is that correct? This is yeah. So during the tax rate bylaw, um, if that was a question, council wanted to ask um, administration to look at some option during the first reading. We could look at that. It's not like pressing. I just thought you know we talked about it and then thought it would bring it back up. Whereas maybe in three years it starts and it just slowly increases if that's the way the council wants to go. So that's all. Thanks. Thank you for the question, Councillor Wayne. Any uh, other comments or questions? Um, I do, oh, Councillor George has a question, thank you. I sent an email to uh, CAO Patty there a couple of days ago requesting some information in regards to our operating expenses, uh, downtime, uh, costs of repairs, uh, um, and such. Uh, I 
things I asked was uh, why our loader was down for three days, cost, why it was broke down, our tandem was down, our uh, one ton truck was down, our, our uh, bobcat was down. What were these expenses? What, how were they uh, occurred? And uh, were these uh, contract uh, repairs or were they uh, repaired? Of, these are some of the information things that we should be looking at <clears throat> when we look at the operating budget and going on into the, our capital budget. Uh, do you have to break down for that? Uh, Pastor George, please turn off your mic for a sec. As an administration, would you have that information or would you be able to get back to council with that information? No, I can provide that information. <clears throat> um, so the first part of your question was, uh, you want to know what equipment was broken down and according to the CAO report with the loader, the tandem, yep. one ton, and the uh bobcat. Okay, Mr. Mayor to the council Campbell we'll start with the loader. Uh the loader, uh what had started out to be a hydraulic leak that was repaired, then we had a uh, coolant leak. Finally, this coolant uh, it actually supplies pressure for our injector pump. We were able to make shift something in house in order to replace that part on the loader to go out and buy it. Um, it's actually sold as an entire part along with the injector pump. It's roughly around seven thousand dollars, not including labor. So we did make it work. It is working. Um, fingers crossed. So the loader is back up and running. The tandem axle, which is the Sterling. We blew a seal on the axle, um, so it was parked. Uh, as you can imagine, it's an older truck, so we needed to source out parts, and we had that repaired again. Uh, took us three days to get it repaired, <clears throat> hence why we had a hesitation in our snow removal. The sanding truck, we had issues with the alternator and the charging system. Um, we had that replaced as well as both batteries. Um, and the skid steer, again, we had a hydraulic uh, filter that choked off and we had no hydraulics, um, just a, a bad filter. Again, uh, we're talking about an, a part that's in Edmonton. We had to run there, get it, get it back. So that was only down a day. Uh, you're asking for reasons. Um, you know, I think we're going to come up to that in capital. I don't know if we want to, do you really want to delve in that right now? Cause I think we'll talk about that later when it comes to the loader. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And so, Bottom line is, um, Councillor Campbell, the equipment is old, um, and hence why we put some of that forth in our capital budget proposal. So that's some of the things we can discuss later on. I hope that answers your questions, or is there a little more you're looking at? One of the things I was wondering about is whether we're doing our repairs ourselves, or are we contracting this out? Have to bring in mechanics or uh, out of. Uh, and Mr. Mayor, through the Councillor Campbell, that's, you know, that's a difficult one to nail down. I mean, uh, we do do as much in-house mechanical repairs as we can, but of course, like any other uh, piece of equipment, it's a specialty a piece of equipment, especially when it comes to an injector pump. Um, so some of those items would be contracted out to somebody that does know that sort of equipment. Um, we're good, but we're only so good. So uh, some of that does require uh, an outsource. When this is brought up in the cap uh, capital budget, then you can give us the costs for this. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor George. Any other questions for this uh, number one flagged item? Um, the one thing I wanted to mention is, so um, again, we're looking towards a year when uh, the hemp company is off of uh, tax free for three. What do you think it would make a difference as far as uh, our budget is concerned and percentage of income from uh, industrial? Mr. Mayor, I can only go off the last assessment and I don't know if I can share that, can I? People's assessment? Um, I'm, I'm not looking okay. for the, the oh, dollar figure. Okay. Oh, not the dollar figure? What? No, I um, wanted to know what difference is that going to make? Um, if, like we're told that it's 12% right now. Is it going to be 15 okay. after that? Or 
but like what kind of direction are we heading because it kind of gives a feel as to how much business we have to really try to, to make a difference for a community right mr mayor we can look into that i wouldn't have that right now sorry okay thank you councilor wayne you had your hand up no i think we can move on to the next item by the looks of it thank you mr mayor flagged item two msi operating revenue the administration provide the amount of funding received for msi operating in the town of Ruderheim. The town has budgeted to receive 56,000 from municipal affairs from the municipal sustainability initiative. The funding is distributed to planning and development, 16,000 and Carol and Mushmire Arena, 40,000 to offset operating costs. Thank you. Any questions from Council on Ellen? Looks like we keep moving. Flagged item number three, road supplies and material. The administration provide the justification for an $8,000 increase in this line item. This is a projected cost increase for supplies and materials that support the maintenance of our roadways to maintain current service levels. Items included in this line item are fuel for vehicles to maintain roadways, gravel for maintenance to our alleys and rural service area roads, chips for our spray patcher, emulsion for crack sealing, sand salt for winter maintenance, chips for winter maintenance, traffic sign upgrades and repairs along roadways, street furniture, waste collection re replacements. Thank you for that. Um, the question that I would have is, so how did we do these repairs the year before without an $8,000 increase? So Mr. Mayor, this is a projected um, cost to buy these same things next year with the projected inflation, I think is at 4%, close to 4.2% for municipal services. Okay, but um, last year we didn't have this as a separate item. Do you understand what I mean? Like this one seems to be standing out as an extra over and above that we didn't have last year and was it just buried in the budget that we couldn't see those numbers or how, World how, supplies what's it and materials have always been in the budget mr mayor okay but it wasn't eight thousand extra last year so are we doing a bunch more is that what's going on I, i'm not understanding Mr. Mayor, so, no, so uh, the big costs here out of all those items are all, <clears throat> they all jump up in costs. The big thing is the traffic sign upgrades. As you all can see that we've been replacing traffic signs throughout town. That was something that council had requested a few years back. So we've begun quite heavy actually in the fall to start replacing some of our street signage. So a lot of those costs, uh, not not all of them, but a lot of those costs are to do with the sign upgrades. Um, they're very expensive. The other one is the gravel. That is a big cost right now. Um, we have turned our, our heads on some of our range roads, which are part of our annexation. We have to address those. Um, we had the good fortune of crushing all that gravel a few years back, which really, really um, helped, uh, helped us along with not having to put gravel on that road and, and hold it together. Those roads need gravel. Um, and actually, I was just writing down some numbers there. It's an approximation of about four thousand dollars of gravel. Um, so we have a mile one way, a mile another way, and a mile going south. So they have to be maintained. Um, so most of these costs, and you know, we've broken it down, but most of the costs are with the gravel and our street signage. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, Mayor. it does. Thank you, um, Deputy Mayor. Had you had your hand up? Okay, uh, Councillor George. On your projected cost for your gravel. Uh, you're annexing that through the county of Lamont. Uh, we buy uh, gravel from the best uh, pricing that we can get. So we use local contractors um, and whoever that might be. So we're, I always outsource and get, uh, I get usually three to four different numbers before we buy. So your, what is your projected uh, cost per yard approximate? Uh, I, it varies, Councillor Campbell. It really does. Um, I haven't nailed it down yet because we haven't passed the budget. So until I pass the budget, then I'll know where I'm gonna what I'm gonna have to spend, right? So it could be less. Oh yes, it could be. I'm hoping, but I think it's like everything else. And again, I, I want to make it very clear: costs of operating equipment on all aspects, not just municipal, but contractors, private services, they've all gone up because the goods and services have gone up. So just so we're cognizant of that. That's all I want to say. So. Uh, that gravel that would be delivered cost, right? That's correct, Mr. Or Council Campbell. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, any other questions on this item number three? 
Um, I do, do you have a, another question? So if, if we were not to spend the money on the gravel, what would be the consequences? Mr. Mayor, uh, at this point, we don't have a choice. Um, we're down to mud. There's actually, we're down to the base. So um, we would put our uh, residents or anybody traveling that road at risk and it would be a liability back to the town. Mr. Thank Mayor, you. as well, you risk damaging the base, which would incur a huge cost to uh, get that base up to the place where we could put gravel on it again. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to ask the question. Thank you. And what is the cost for the street furniture and the waste collection replacements? Mr. Mayor, it's around $1,500, and that's to replace either a damaged bench or a planter or a uh, waste collection receptacle. So it's one bench is $1,500. Okay, so if we forego the signs for 2022, uh, how much is that savings? Okay, so um, before I answer that, I would strongly discourage that thought just for the simple reason that there's a safety aspect to those signs. So uh, right now, Mr. Mayor, uh, and I'm gonna use Brookside as an example. There's some of those signs, there's no numbers left on those signs. So um, yes, great, we all have GPS on our phones, but it doesn't look great for our town aesthetically. And uh, there are people that don't have GPS that do look for those signs and how to navigate um, cost-wise a couple thousand dollars okay because that's pushing close to the eight thousand right there yeah and again as i indicated at the very beginning we listed everything that falls under this category that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is going up so we just we we brought it all together i've highlighted the high points of what this is going to be and you gotta remember this is eight thousand more that's on top of what we are actually already using in our operating Okay, and those signs that would get all of the signs completed then in town? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, for the east part of town, for the northeast part of town, it would complete it. Um, we do have, uh, again, we, we're slowly making our way down to, to Old Town and, uh, and Sunset. Works. And by the time we get to West Woodlands, I would suspect those signs should be replacing at that time. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor, just for information, it's about $225 just for materials for one sign. And okay. then you have cost of labor on top of that. Yep. How many signs did we do this year? Mr. Mayor, we did up in Brookside, we did 21. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, flagged item number four, recommended uh, that administration provide the increase for the Bruderheim Water Co-op in 2022. The negotiated rate for providing water and services at the Bruderheim Water Co-op are negotiated annually through a formal contract. At this time, we've not been notified of the 22 water rate, and we have been notified since the publishing of this package. It's zero for next year. So in January, we'll negotiate with the uh, Bruderheim Water Co-op, their 2022 contract. Flag number five. Hold, hold on. Oh, um, sorry. Um, a question on the Bruderheim Water Club. Were we on some kind of a scale uh, moving forward over the years with that rate? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. So last year we changed to not just supplying water, but services. And so um, the whole way that they were paying before changed. It was a significant increase to their users. And so we're slowly moving up. And um, as soon as we establish that rate, I'll let council know. Thank you. Um, number five, Mr. Mayor, administration provide the rate increase projected by John Patuk. And uh, as I just said, uh, Councillor Campbell, that there'll be no, uh, reported there'll be no rate increase from the John Patuk Water Commission for 2022. Just wanted to note, thank you to Councillor George for taking in that meeting on short notice. Uh, flag item number six, administration provide the cost to residents to use the blue bin system versus the blue bag. The negotiated rate through contract with GFL for providing curbside, curbside recycling bin services is $2 per month higher than if we were to go to curbside recycling blue bag services. So that would reduce um, utility bills by $2 a month if we were to go to blue bag instead of the bin, blue bin. So the average resident would save $24 a year. Thank you. Um, flag item number. Hold on, uh, oh. Councillor Len has his hand. Sorry. 
So uh, we are going to just to clarify from my mind, we're staying with the blue bins, right? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Filardo, it was just a question to get me to- Okay, yeah. I just wanted to clarify yeah. that. And if council wanted to change, that would be a council separate motion. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Blue bins work very nicely. You're here. Flagged item number seven, refuse. Administration provide the cost savings if we were to lower the amount of refuse being collected by our contracted services. There would be zero cost saving on the curbside waste collection services through GFL if the amount of refuse was being collected was lower. We pay a monthly service charge to GFL per cart, whether the cart is empty or full. Having said that, other communities have gone to pick up every two weeks to save costs. That was discussed at previous council meetings and council was not in favor of lowering that service level. We pay per ton at St. Michael Landfill. There would be a cost savings on that requisition if our refuse tonnage was to drop annually. Um, administration could investigate those cost savings if the present council wanted to investigate the option of waste pickup every two weeks as opposed to the current weekly pickup. And Deputy Mayor asked this afternoon if I could actually get some costs for that. And uh, we did uh, contact GFL and it approximately would lower um, our costs for uh, curbside cart pickup by 40%. So the average resident would save about $10 a month or $120 a year. And just as a reminder, this wouldn't affect the operating budget. That would be more of um, the utilities rate. So that would lower the cost of residents if we went to um, biweekly instead of weekly. Thank you for that uh, question. So what does it cost to get a second bin? Because I think then you would have residents looking to get a second bin. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, that's funny because administration actually said that to me, um, $25 a month. Yeah, I, I think we'll stick with what we got. But it was a good question. Yeah, it was a great question actually um, when I asked. So what it does do though, um, in other communities that have gone to that is becoming quite a momentum, um, increases the amount of recycling that gets done because people are forced to recycle because it's only getting picked up every two weeks, just as a side note. Uh, Deputy Mayor. So what's happening? Are they looking at changing their recycling so that they're taking more products? I didn't ask that question, sorry, Deputy Mayor. Because yeah, like, I mean, that's the trend that's going, right? Is less garbage, more recycling. But currently right now, the recycling is very poor because all it is is one, two, and three of that, right? So then we're really limited to what we can put out. Technically, oh, I can't say this, never mind. I don't want nobody else to know what I'm doing. But anyhow, yeah, I'll tell you later. Um, recycling is kind of the way to go. And I mean, at 40%, if they add on the $25, are we saving anything or not really then? Mr. Mayor, no, the average resident, if we went to uh, bi-monthly, if they wanted to continue with the amount of uh, refuse, they would have to get into the cart, which would increase their cost by $15 a month the current costs. And I have to say that we had a number of complaints from GFL that the lids are supposed to be fully closed. And um, more often than not, the, the uh, lids are open from being overfilled. The containers on a weekly collection, so. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So we get quite a few concerns from GFL about that, so. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, flag number eight, the arena. The administration provide the, the year that the heating system in the arena dressing rooms is scheduled to be replaced. The current approved five-year capital plan has this heating system for the dressing rooms to be replaced in 2024. We have been applying for energy efficiency grants to fund this initiative. Um, that's it. Any thank questions? You. And I uh, do have a question. Um, last time this was brought up, for this item, it wasn't the, so much the heating system, it was the ventilation system. And uh, Public Works was saying that there might be a fix in the works soon. So it, it's a makeup air unit, so it does, it does everything, right? So it does heating ventilation. Um, so yes, there is something in the works, hopefully in the next uh, uh, few weeks, we'll find out about it. And at that time, we'll have to bring it back to council. It's not something that's in this year's budget, but it may be an opportunity um, if the price is right to bring forth to council if it does come to fruition. Okay, and so is that part of the heating system? Because I thought the heating was in the floor because that room is heated by the floor, right? 
And so that's probably, we could probably just clarify on this, on this. So this should say, uh, my bad, this says heating system, it's actually the makeup air unit. And that's what the exchange is the air. That's the one that, that would be commissioned uh, prior to my arrival. <clears throat> so that was the one that was very expensive back in that day, back in 017, I think it was around $30,000 just for the unit itself, not including any labor. So we may have an opportunity. Um, I can't make any guarantees. It's up to the, uh, the owner of the equipment if they want to get rid of it. And if they do and the price is right, I'll bring it back to council. But it's not something that is budgeted right now for 2022. Okay, thank you. And so if that opportunity arises, would that move the head then of the floor cleaner machine? Um, I'm sorry, I don't quite understand your question. Well, so the capital budget you have the, currently the floor cleaning machine, but not this. And if that uh, ventilation system repair opportunity came about, would that then take precedence over the floor cleaning already in the capital budget? Well, the, the, Mr. Mayor, the makeup area you know, would become a capital. It's actually a capital expenditure. So we looked at it as capital. The the uh, as is the floor cleaner, they're both required. Um, again, if I had to pick one or the other, uh, I personally, I, I mean, the rooms are being heated and I know they don't have the best ventilation, but nothing pro prohibits us from operating the arena without that makeup area. I know that means you really <laughs> want some ventilation in there. I do have another option, a very inexpensive option that I'm looking at that would help move some of that air in those uh, locker rooms <clears throat> as a temporary fix in the event that we can't get that that uh, makeup air unit that we're looking for. I got some extra fans for you too. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, we'd be looking at uh, bringing that to council um, for an addition to the approved capital budget. And then it would be at that time for council to decide. Okay, thank you. Um, no further questions. Flagged item nine was answered at the at the um, council meeting that night uh, of November seventeenth. Why were there eight thousand dollar wages increase? And uh, we answered the question that um, we moved it from uh, within infrastructure services to correctly aligned with the work being done. Uh, flagged item number ten that administration provide the reason for ten thousand dollar increase in contract management. The last year, we have experienced a larger presence of pests in our park areas. The pests create hazards for our visitors and if not controlled, will overpopulate our parks areas. The spraying of our parks areas controls the spread of weeds into private property, into our town. The last few years, we've noticed an increased presence of noxious weeds on our properties. We have a legal responsibility to control the weeds on our property. We also we have also added funds for the upgrade of our power services in the campground, is that it was a number one complaint of our long stay campers. The amperage in the sites wasn't enough. Thank you. Um, question. So last year, did we spray any weeds at all? Mr. Mayor, and through the rest of council, last time that we did spraying was in 2017, and it's lasted us five years. So I think we've done a really good job. This is a this is not an expenditure for weed control. I'm not talking about pests. For weed control, that would be an expenditure every year. It's something that we would be doing every so many years. In this case, this is coming up in our fifth year. It's time, and I think we've all seen the spread of weeds throughout town over the last few years. So. Okay, what is the breakdown in cost between the weeds and the, the pests? Mr. Mayor, again, this this number, and uh, I've talked it over with uh, with uh, the CAO, the $10,000 increase is a combined increase from a couple of different areas, right? So you, where you see it as one item number, we see it through a few different GLs. So um, <clears throat> the $10,000 increase is a combination of weeds, pests, all together in a couple of different areas. Um, for the weed control, um, we'll probably be looking at the neighborhood of around uh, $8,000 because part of that 8,000 is already built into the operating budget. This is just a number that was above and, and over the budget. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, and the pest control, that was, those costs are going up. Um, I don't think there's one councillor other than the two new councillors that didn't call me this summer saying, can we do something about the gophers at the uh, ag grounds, or in this case, ground squirrels. Um, so we are, that was a big cost to us this year. Um, so and I, I suspect it's gonna be even a bigger cost next year. I'm just judging by what we're seeing out there. Okay, thank you. Councillor Dana. 
just on the topic of weeds, since you we put like the money gets put towards weeds for the town to take care of it. What is I'm not 100 percent sure what like with the residents in town, is there a bylaw with weeds? Can, can someone just quickly give like a little down low on that, please? Absolutely. That's a great question. So we do have a um, actually uh, my infrastructure services doesn't have a mic. Maybe you could slide over to Judy's. She could better address that. But um, yeah, we do have a bylaw about um, land use bylaw about weed control. And we do have weed inspectors that come into the community and look at properties. And they do get weed notices. And they're given so many days to deal with those weeds if they are um, not dealt with. So, but I'll let um, Mrs. Cote to address. I would just add to that, um, when the town has a bunch of weeds that as, as Dennis is trying to allude to that he's trying to take care of, it's really hard to enforce weed control on residents when they turn around and point the finger back to the town, right? And so we do a lot of education with residents right now because this, this past year, the weed inspector came out and the town had a lot of weeds that they identified uh, that we needed to be dealing with. So we took kind of an education approach to our residents this year so that we weren't in that situation of saying, you need to clean up, but we weren't cleaned up. So does that answer your question? Thank you. So um, is this something that we should be doing a little bit every year, not waiting until it's a huge problem after five years? Well, Mr. Mayor, you know, up until last year, we really didn't see a significant increase in, in a lot of our weed issues within town other than some of the private residences. So I, I think personally, uh, from what I'm seeing is probably every three to four years is a, is a good number to work with. And uh, doing a little bit each year, well, we, we're hitting the whole town this year is what's in our budget because that's it's spread throughout all our grounds. Um, I think we're going to be good for three to four years. Okay, thank you. Pastor George? Does uh, this budget include the uh, um, water, wastewater area, like the um, VAP pond and all that area? In this budget, uh, this request, or is it just parks? This would be just for the parks and our open spaces. So, ag grounds, the parks, the campground, all the boulevards you see along the highway, um, uh, in behind the school, any places, uh, gazebo area uh, around town hall. So, this does not include the wastewater area, though? No, it does not. And that is part of our Home property as well. That is correct. Are you talking about uh, Mr. Mayor through the council plan? Are you, are you uh, inquiring about the reeds and everything that are around our ponds? No, I'm talking about noxious weeds, thistles, all that kind of stuff that you see as you drive north along that road and look into our property. Okay, so you're talking about going up 205 that way? Exactly. Okay, no, that is not does not incorporate that. Thanks. Um, so if we're looking to address the weed issue for the town and we're not addressing those areas, aren't we in contravention then of our own policy? Uh, okay, so now we're talking about uh, ditches alongside our, our annex roads. Um, it's a good question, but uh, it's not something that I addressed. Um, that is a much bigger uh, project. Um, and if we're talking about the lagoon area, that becomes even a different aspect because now you're dealing with a wastewater facility that there's different types of chemicals to use. You can't just use any ordinary weed spray. Um, so that's not something I, quite frankly, in the lagoon area alone, we don't have uh, a dandelion. We'll use dandelions as an issue out there, but they just, they just don't have out there. Um, the ditches, uh, alongside the north side i don't see a problem there so I, I drive that road every day in the summer so i'm not saying that you're wrong i'm saying i don't see a big weed issue alongside that ditch area going north on 205. mr mayor if i may interrupt um 
perhaps we could provide counsel with the rural and urban applications because rural agriculture is different than urban. Um, the Weed Act is very specific about what's allowed in both of those jurisdictions. So if that would help counsel understand, maybe we could do the lagoon area, the rural area, and the urban service area, if that would be helpful. Yes, thank you very much. The reason I bring this up is that these costs could be put into different budget categories. Like the lagoon area could be brought into the water services. And just to lean back to what uh, CEO said, we focused on urban on this particular weed budget and as part of the operating budget. It's urban, not into the rural area or the lagoon area. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, moving on to flag item number 12, salary and wages, that administration justify the reasoning for recommended COLA of 1.5% for council and staff. Cost of living allowance COLA is to account for the adjustment for staff member wages to account for the consumer price index for goods and services, as opposed to the recognition of service. The Alberta Consumer Price Index, ACPI, measures the average price change of goods and services purchased by the Alberta consumers by comparing the cost of fixed basket of goods and services from different time periods. These goods include shelter, transportation, food, recreation, education, household operations, clothing, and health and personal care. And just some trends that I took off Statistics Canada. In January 2017, the ACP was 1.55 and the Bruderheim Cola was approved at 1.50. January 2018, the ACPI was 2.40. Bruderheim Cola was 1.50. January 2019, the ACPI was 1.78 and the Bruderheim Cola was 1.5. In January 2020, ACPI was 1.12 and the Bruderheim Cola was 0 0.5. January 2021, it's projected to be 2.92. Of course, we've only got statistics till October and the Bruderheim Cola was zero. And January 2022, of course, is to be determined and the Bruderheim recommended Cola is 1.5. Making minor adjustments to COLA as we go year to year will ensure the wage grid will stay competitive so that every three or four years, we don't have to do a major change to catch up. That's the philosophy best practice that most municipalities adopt to move to an annual COLA discussion with council. We want to keep good employees working in the town and the way we keep good employees is we keep pace with everyone else or we are going to lose them. In our region, the average recommended COLA is 1.5% with municipal council approving from zero to 2.5% COLA for staff in 2022. So far in 2022, sorry, this wasn't on your paper. I just got it this week as many councils have met. Um, approved so far is Lamont 2%, Fagerville 2.5, Fort Saskatchewan 1.5, Redwater 4.0, Bonacord 1.5, Gibbons 4.0, Legal, um, 2.0 and Sturgeon County 0.75. Um, was there any municipalities our size in that uh, range? Because like Sturgeon County has got a lot of money. Lamont, Redwater, Bonacord, Gibbons. Okay, and what were those numbers again? Sorry. Lamont was 2%, Redwater 4%, Bonacord 1.5, Gibbons 4.0. Okay, thank you. Councillor Len? Well, I, you know, I truly believe you have to maintain some COLA with the employees. I see that we keep including council in that. Council does not be, have to be included in the COLA. We get sufficient amount of money and we live fairly good. So I think that the, 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 we should put all our effort into the staff and the staff should get their, I, it's very important to know, like I worked 37 years in the industry and uh, we didn't get raises, we'd have uproars and stuff like that. So I truly believe that uh, maintaining the staff and uh, at 1.5 is a, a minimal amount, personally. I've seen 10% on these things. And, uh, but I, I tru truly believe we can cut council out. That's a little bit of a savings because council, uh, it doesn't make a difference to us. It's not gonna change our lives one bit. So I, I really truly believe that uh, cutting council out and maintaining the staff is really important to me. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Dana. I'd have to agree with Len on that one too. Okay, thank you, um, Deputy Mayor Judy. I would have to agree as well. Um, some of these towns that have given their themselves their employees big increases, it's because they've lost those employees. 
and now they're feeling the hurt because employees cost you 10,000 plus to retrain. You got to keep the ones that you got, especially the good ones. So I agree that we'd better do the 1.5 at least. Thank you for that. Um, I do notice that at the bottom of that statement, there's councils approving from zero to two and a half percent. So there's a range that we just didn't hear the ones that were at zero. Mr. Mayor, I was just looking across the province. So um, yeah, just that was the average. I was just lately this week though, um, I was the, that's what it got approved locally. I was just adding, so. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Councilor Wayne. The recommended 1.5%, that's not included in this, is it? In uh, the, the actual budget, the interim budget? Mr. Mayor, yes it is. And there's a decrease, is that correct then, in wages? Mr. Mayor, because we um, eliminated one administrative position. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councillor George, and Councillor Ash. Over the last uh, four years, how far behind have we gotten Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Campbell, far behind as in our hourly wage compared to other municipalities? No, it's uh, our, uh, our percentages of uh, uh, increase in COLA compared to the rate of inflation. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I didn't have that We, we haven't been keeping up to the rate of inflation. Have we? No, that's what that little chart is for. On that yeah, that's what I'm yeah. getting at. I'm in total agreement with... Uh, the land and uh, recommending that uh, we uh, uh, that council don't take a, a cola increase uh, and uh, I am also in favor of a, at least a two percent increase for staff. Thank you Councillor George. Uh, Councillor Wayne. Am I able to ask what kind of dollar value this is that 1.5 percent? Mr. To? Mayor on the average that would make a difference of a thousand dollars a year to an employee before taxes. So you're looking about eight to ten thousand dollars for the course of the year. Is that correct? A thousand dollars per employee. And how many employees in total? Nine. So about nine thousand. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank and you. Um, what would uh, Councillor Ashley? Sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> I th I feel like. Um, with the budget, maybe we should have had it break down, not necessarily who makes what, but if we had more of a starting point. So we're saying 1.5, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if we had a baseline, so this direct, not this director, but a director makes this much. So then 1.5, we would know a dollar amount, what we're going in. 1.5 doesn't sound like a lot, but when we're talking now $10,000, that's a lot of money. And right now, um, People are losing jobs everywhere. They're getting laid off. And these are good workers that have been um, with the job with their job and they're reliable people for years and years. And um, right now we're in a pandemic and we're having residents who are struggling to pay their bills and uh, uh, provide the bare minimum for their family. So a tax so to have a tax increase, so the staff and the council can receive a raise. I don't support this. Thank you, Council Ashley. Oh. Uh, one more thing. Yeah, sorry. Um, I just wanted to add that maybe um, instead of looking at a raise, I know that the town office is closed on Fridays and we're um, talking about um, having good employees and enforcing it. Is And um, public works, like I'm not 100% how that works, but if we're going to is there some way that instead of a raise, maybe we could incorporate uh, Fridays off somehow for public works and have it more, less of a d divide maybe? Mr. Mayor, through uh, Councillor Carter, um, administration works Fridays. They don't have the day off. It's just the office is closed to allow us to do filing with the loss of two administrative people. Um, just, um, lowers the load of the walk-in traffic. We're still answering phones and uh, it allows uh, staff to do a lot of filing and um, response to emails and that sort of thing. So it was just an operational try and it's actually working really well. Um, we'll see post, hopefully post, <laughs> um, we get there one day uh, what that might look like. And um, we're kind of tracking, and we also don't know, a lot of people have gone to online services now instead of walk-in. And so once we, um, 
hopefully there's an endemic. Uh, we'll see if people start returning to office or they stay with the online services. So that's why we're just trying this for now. So yeah, but they're definitely working on Friday. So thank you, Councillor Ashley, Councillor Dana. So I get that we're in a pandemic, but the prices of absolutely everything, food, the standard of living, everything is going to go up. Our, the, I'd rather pay, like not us in general, give the people a raise now because it's going to happen. Like we're going to, like the wages are going to increase with the prices are doubling and stuff. It's ridiculous. So the government's not just going to like just keep everything like this because we're in a pandemic everything's going to have to start going up people are going to have to start getting paid more so it, it's going to happen and i'd rather have the people in the office around who are supporting us get that little bit and there's lots of jobs out there like i know there's a lot of people that are unemployed and it's a struggle for people but you know it's i don't know how to explain it but i do i support exactly what len said um what you said i i think it's just just I just feel that they they should and we shouldn't because it's a pandemic not give people what they what they deserve so I've seen raises happen during this time and it's only it, it's gonna happen people are gonna get paid more money because of what situation we're in now so I'd rather do it on our on our clock so that's all I got Thank you, Councillor Dana. Um, I just wanted to draw attention to the package of information that we have that it shows from 2017 to what's recommended for 2022, what council did uh, offer for uh, COLA. So in 2017, it was 1.5, 2018 was 1.5, 2019, 1.5, 2020 was 0 0.5, uh, 2021 was zero, and it's recommended for 1.5 this year. Um, I, I do uh, uh, acknowledge that it's important to keep good staff and uh, dollars is important, but there, there are significant studies out there that money is not the only driver for people to uh, be employed in an organization. And somewhere in our budget, however we find it, we have to find a way to bring our tax increase down because over 3% is, is too much. Uh, however we find it in the budget, we, we need to bring that down because it's um, over 3%, uh, I think is untenable for our residents. Um, and that's that's my take on it. But I, I just wanted to draw that attention to our council so that they know from 2017 to 2021, it wasn't 0% every year. And I think we can move on to the next item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Number 14, the administration addressed why we're still budgeting for events in 2022 when COVID could prevent that from taking place. We've continued to offer non-traditional programming and events throughout the pandemic, and we are seeing success with offering in-person programming services by adopting the REP guidelines that were provided by Alberta Health. Budget expenses under this line in our community celebrations, celebrating volunteers, seniors, young, young athletes, community investment program, and Canada Day celebrations. Any questions on that one? I believe Councillor George is the one that asked for this one. Please turn your mic on. One of the things uh, I have to say is some of this programming, I don't know whether it's beneficial. Whereas the goal, like a lot of training we're getting, uh, some of the activities that we're doing, uh, we're going to cut. These are some of the places that we're going to be cutting. Uh, uh, it's not, uh, we have to start looking at what we need, not what we want. And uh, that being said, uh, we should be taking a better look at what kind of programming we're doing, what kind of uh, training we're doing, what we're spending on travel uh, for training and what we're getting out of it. What is our staff, what is our council getting out of it? Uh, a lot of it is to uh, what meetings are we uh, attending and what is being brought to back to our community and to our council from these meetings that we have. The beneficiality of this, this, this practice. Um, uh, I feel that we could really do some, some research into this area and, to, uh, and uh, give it a real hard look 
as to what we're getting for our dollar. And Councilor Land has his hand up, but before we move away from Councilor George's question, um, looking at what was asked and what George brought up as two different things. So maybe administration could address what that flagged item actually was. Mr. Mayor, the question was why we still, there was an ex, there's $5,000 in the programming budget for COVID um, when council asked me what was in that. And so um, we're, we're keeping $5,000 in the 2022 to buy things like PPE for staff um, for like today, all the signs have to be changed in the arena and the community hall, as well as uh, ensuring that uh, our staff have all the um, antiseptics and cleaners they need to stay safe in the workplace. And uh, we have a rigorous uh, equipment cleaning uh, between operators. So those sorts of costs, and we're tracking them all separately um, to ensure that ever, if there's an opportunity to recover some of those costs that we can apply for that grant. Okay, so that, that's a different line item in the budget than what uh, Councillor George was just asking about. But Correct. it's under community programs. Yeah. Okay. And the reason it's there is because emergency management's there. And that's where we're tracking that. Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question, Councillor George? Yes, it does. And thank you ever so much, uh, CEO Patty, for the explanation. Thank you, Councillor Lennon. Well, I, after George spoke there, and I was looking at things here and uh, travel and the legislative services, travel and expenses for council is just phenomenal. There's a thing coming up I see in the uh, Heartlands putting on down south. I hope our council doesn't attend that sort of thing. We're not even a member, we're just an associate. We travel so much to these things and go to places like that. We are spending $70,000 a year on that stuff. We go to Quebec, which wasn't necessary. We go to a lot of places. We have to start looking at what the council is spending. And there's a, and George brought it up exactly right. Is there really a need for us to be to a lot of these places and have a lot of these courses? Going to Kananaskis, for the heartland, I saw that in the thing there. That just blew my mind. Why would somebody from this council want to attend that? It's an expense. With there's no gain to the community. We don't even have a vote. It's just a go lovely golfing weekend out paid by the by the taxpayers. We have to start looking at those type of items and making sure those are where we can cut ex expenditures in large amounts. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lynn. Um, could you point out in the line item in the budget where we're going to Canada ask us? Well, I just saw that in the, in the, I got my news. That, that, was a, that was an invitation. I don't know anybody from our council that's taken up that well, invitation. I'm sure that there. I'm right now. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> believe, I don't believe there's any money in the budget for that. So. Well, I'm just going to make sure it's stopped before the foolishness starts. Yeah, so <laughs> in, in the budget, which is what we're discussing right now. Is there a line item that you think we should be cutting so that we can get below 3%? Absolutely line. There's crowding substitutes, but with that, we have to look in depth at that. Then your mic isn't on. That line, I think if we look in depth, we don't need to go to travel. We don't need to go exotic places for anything. If, uh, if it's not an absolute necessary to the Bruderheim, I don't think we have to attend it. We attend too much stuff. We spend too much money on travel. And stuff like that. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you. Um, would the administration address the question of what that dollar figure is for? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm just looking this year at um, legislative services. So we're referring to legislative services. Is that where we're moving? Sorry, Mr. Mayor, I was just working on the flagged items. Go ahead, Councilor Wayne. Are you um, talking? Sorry. Sorry, so travel subsistence membership for council is 15,000 annually. And I was just gonna look at our variance report. There was not a lot of travel this year and I feel we're almost out of money. So um, as you know, nobody went anywhere. Just looking at the variance report for the end of um, November, I believe, 
we only have $1,400 left. And so that we've reduced that amount every year actually for a long time. So we were actually concerned it's getting too low um, once in-person training meetings start again. So does that encompass programs like the Indigenous event that we just recently Absolutely, had? Mr. Mayor. So we're trying to bring more training to town uh, to reduce the cost of travel. Okay, thank you. So I'd ask your question, Councillor Lynn. No, because I know we've done a lot of travel where we shouldn't be traveling. And the Indigenous thing, I, that's a good one to bring up, but that was a marvelous thing, but there's other ones we don't need. Thank you. Um, I don't know which ones they are for this coming year that do you want to- Mr. Mayor, sorry. Georgie Mikeson. Um, Mr. Mayor, we don't budget for specific things. Um, what we do is typically look from year to year. What the trend is, is how much council spends. And we don't say that each councillor gets this much. It's just what gets spent. And then we look at those reports. Whenever we come up with the budget, we look at the last five years, what was spent typically. And if we see a steady increase every year, then we know that we have to increase. And um, Again, last year, not a lot of in-person training or meetings or conferences were attended and um, we're close to out of money. So it's a very tight budget for seven people. Um, you're looking at $2,000 a piece. Thank you. And that's for memberships as well for council. So like okay. AMA and things like that. Okay. FCM. Councillor Georgia. I kind of sore spot here right now. Uh, I'm looking at legislative services. Mr. Mayor, could I just ask we stick to the flagged items because if we go through the budget okay, next, okay, okay. then we can actually. Yeah, that's okay. Sure, no problem. We'll, we'll, <laughs> I just uh, I'm not prepared to go to budget and back and forth the flag. Yeah. So thanks, thank you. Um, Councilor Green <laughs> was your question. So okay, so we'll wait until we're through the flagged items. <laughs> thank you very much for your consideration. Um, Number 15, the administration investigated the possibility of reserve transfer to minimize the effects of a rate increase from John Patuk. And as we learned from Councillor Campbell, there will be none. So um, that flag item is done. So that was $10,000, right? Mr. Mayor, we didn't put an increase. That would be utilities, right? So that okay. doesn't have a direct impact on operating budget. Um, flag item number 16, COLA. Uh, the question was asked, I think that's what um, Councillor Carter was alluding to. Is there something else we could do to recognize staff? Uh, the staff grid was developed to recognize staff that are continuing to improve on an annual basis as they learn position with an organization. We currently have a five-step grid. Industry standard recognizes most employees take approximately five years to be considered experienced in their position. We have staff, five staff members at the top of their grid. The staff who are at top of the grid have been there for an average of three years. Staff are also recognized with additional vacation for years of service. Our staff currently struggle to be able to use their lot of vacation because of our small and dedicated staff. The following vacation is allowed based on years of service. Less than eight years of service, we have two employees who get 15 work days of vacation. Eight to 16 years of service, we have six employees currently receiving 20 work days um, of vacation annually. Um, 25 or 16 to 23 years, we have no employees there right now. And 23 or more years of service, we have one employee who receives 30 working days of vacation. And plus, they're allowed to bank time for overtime. So if staff work overtime, they can take it in um, remuneration or they can bank it to take uh, time off. We currently have a robust employee recognition awards policy in place that recognize staff for years of service, significant events. Our policy allows gifts of cash as recognition, which are taxable. Ta staff are taxed on this recognition. It would be difficult to recognize acknowledgement of one staff member contribute contributions over another. If one staff member is assigned to a special product project, that means someone else is covering off their duties. Cost of living COLA is to account for the adjustment to staff members' wages to account for consumer price index for goods and services, as opposed to a recognition of service. That's everything, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Any additional information needed on that? Okay, um, flag number 17, parks, uh, communities in bloom. The administration justified the increase to communities in bloom budget. Before the 2022 budget, the cost to repair and replace park enhancements was buried in these line items throughout the budget. We are working to better identify the placement of expenses in the budget by placing the items to beautify our community or 
appropriately placed in the budget. The cost for flowers, trees, landscaping materials have increased significantly the past few years, which has reduced our ability to beautify our community as we have in the past. You may have noticed that the hanging planters have not been planted for the last few years due to rising costs. We've had to contract the controlling of noxious weeds in the community as is a labor intensive job, handwork, and our public works department does not have the resources to complete this. Noxious weeds are controlled by the Weed Act. Compliance with the Weed Act is mandatory. Queen's Park landscaping ties are damaged and hazardous and are scheduled to be repaired in 2022. The streetlight banners have almost all been removed due to significant damage from aging. Much like flags, they don't last forever. Vandalism in the community results in the replacement of planter recycling containers and park benches tables. Planters tables, recycling containers all cost around $1,500 each. Economic development is a priority in our strategic plan. The presentation of a well-kept community assists in the attraction of investment into our community. That's everything, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any questions from Councilman? Flag datum number 18, parks increase in wages. The administration justified the $8,000 increase in wages. The wage increase was reassigned of wages from roads, 4,166. Common services, $3,200.06. 3206 sewer $124. You will notice that these line items reduced by the wage amount that parks increased. Every year we try and track our time accurately to ensure that it's being assigned to the correct cost centers. Thank you for that. Um, any questions from council? Um, I have a question. So if those costs were removed from one into that one, did the other one subsequently reduce then? That's correct. Mr. Can we see that? Can you An see that? An example of where that is? Yeah, that's in those three items. Roads, common services, and sewer. Yeah, so um, in our booklet, where where would we see the reduction? Under the roads. If you go under the separate budget tabs. And so the first one that I come upon is common services. Salaries and wages went down by $3,206. That's on the individual sheets. And then if you go to roads on the next pages, they went down by $4,166. And then sewer, they went down by $121. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Flag item 19, franchise fees. The administration provide clarity around where ACO franchise fee revenue is being posted to. Franchise fees are signed as per our reserve policy to reserve RU3 for future utility infrastructure, life cycle, maintenance, and replacement. So there is a policy that directs it automatically. So when we voted it in, we knew right away that it was going to reserves then. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. And again, Mr. Mayor, Council at any time can do reserve transfer with a motion. Uh, flagged item 20. The administration advised ways to reduce the budget increase from 2021 to 2022. Possible ways to recommend the reduce the recommended 3.62 interim operating budget increase offset the tax or the impact by taxes by doing a $10,000 reserve transfer. Budget increase would be 2.6% with this revenue increase. Remove the new float under community programming, $5,000. Budget increase would be 3.11 with this expense reduction. Remove the BCIP funding of $5,000. Budget increase would be 3.11% with this expense reduction. Reduce or remove Canada expenses for up to $8,000. Fireworks are $5,000. The budget increase would be 2.8% with this expense reduction. And um, Mayor um, Hoke asked me about the grant. We, we only get $1,500 a year for the Canada Day grant. Now it's been reduced significantly. So that grant, is that already applied against the cost of the fireworks or is the $1,500 to be subtracted from that $5,000? The fifteen dollars is just for Canada Day. So it's a revenue. So Canada Day would be $6,500 but we would still get the 1500 to do something else, right? We could still do a mock or a lower scale Canada Day. Uh, COLA, not giving staff and council the recommended 1.5 coal increase. The budget increase would be 2.4% with this expense reduction. COLA only giving non-management staff, excluding directors and council 1.5. The COLA increase budget increase would be 3.13 with this expense reduction. Great, thank you. Any questions from council on this information? This is great information. So um, with council not taking an increase, what is the dollar value associated with that? Mr. Mayor, that's only $500. Per councillor? No, nope, per year. year. Okay, I'm not understanding. 
So the five hundred dollars is for all of council for a one and a half percent increase. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Okay. We Thank don't you. make new wages. Right. Yeah. So it's not a big dollar. Okay, and then um, the uh, if if we were to go with the ten thousand dollar reserve transfer, uh, the first one, and the float reduction, what would the combined number bring the tax increase down to? The average tax increase down to. That's the thing I wanted to remind council when we're saying an average tax increase, dependent on the assessment of that property, doesn't mean that it's going to be automatically say two percent. It's going to be whatever the uh, uh, assessment is. So the, the, there are folks that go, well, you said it was going to be only a two percent tax increase, but that's an average. It could be less. It could be more than that. So it's just uh, something to remind council when people ask you, well, mine went up three or four or five percent. That's because it's an average, not a across the board. If it was an across the board, we would be slashing a lot more out of this budget. Mr. Mayor, if I could just correct you, we're not talking about a tax increase. We're talking about a budget increase. So yep, yeah, you said tax increase. So. Yep. Well, to me, it means the same thing. So <laughs> if if we take those two items out of there, what is the budget increase? If approximately two point one. Um, the director of finance or corporate services, yeah, 2.1, 2.01, Mr. Mayor. Okay, and then what does BCIP stand for again? Sorry, the Bruderham Community Investment Program, where okay. our nonprofits can apply for assistance. Yep. Okay, um, just want to make sure all of our council understands, as uh, some might be something new for our two new councillors. Um, and I, I see Councillor Wayne's hand going up. He's probably going to ask, is it only $1,500? I, 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 I'll just let you ask your question. I think you're leading in the right direction. I was going to ask the, the B SIP, is that going to be running again this year? Is it, where is it in here? Can, if we take that out or should we take it out and what would that be? Does that make sense? So, Mr. Mayor, it is included in this year's budget. As you know, we originally started the program with $10,000 a year, and we reduced it a few years back to five because of budget constraints. Um, it currently is, and if we took it out, that would lower the 3.62 to 3.11. Do you feel that would be significant if it was taken out? Do you think that would be like two, two organizations and people that were looking at that you were, excuse me, that are using it? Do you think it would be um, an item to look at to remove? Mr. Mayor, I'm suggesting that is it's a, it is a nice to have, as Councillor Gamble said, and it supports our nonprofit. Um, Council could look at other ways, uh, waiving, but then if you lower our revenue on other things, you're actually, you know, Rob Peter to pay Paul. So if you say, okay, we're going to give them the halls for free. Um, so, you know, when they make those requests, we ask them to do that through the BCIP program, right? So remember before many years ago, we constantly get requests from nonprofits to get a break on this or to this or to that. So now that we've formalized it and said, go through BCIP, um, what council could do is um, we go back to the old way of one off and then I'd have to look through the budget to see if we could find options. It just, it's a little more complicated, but, or you just say no to nonprofits all year for everything. There's an option. No, I don't think that's the way to go. I was just curious if that would be a big hit on nonprofits. I'm not and seeing it as a hit as in providing, originally the grant was set up for programming in our community. So if you're asking that question, no, it will not have an impact on our nonprofits because the last, uh, since March of 2020, we have not seen applications for nonprofits for programming. It's been for other things, if you can remember, COVID help, um, water heater for the seniors, I believe it was, um, those sorts of things. So are they applying for programming? No, because of the pandemic, they're unable to provide that. So if, if that answers your question, they are applying for it to help um, get them through the pandemic with no options to fundraise. So complicated question. But. So with things hopefully opening up, that shouldn't be an issue anymore. Or and as you know, I've, um, we've lost our recreation programmer as a position, so really going to be looking to nonprofits to help us out with programming. So, okay. Uh, and the, the other question I had was, uh, Mayor was asking about the ten thousand dollar transfer from reserves. Where would that come from? Would that we have a we have a reserve um, 
is it R1 or R2, that is lower the impact tax. We have a reserve for that, that we transfer money to. Is that the same as the RCMP one? No. Great question. Thank you. What is in that reserve, Colonel? I knew you were gonna say that, just a second. <laughs> I have it somewhere here in my gazentes. And then, while you're looking that up, I have a subsequent question about Actually, that. Mr. Mayor, okay. I apologize. That is the same reserve the RCMP comes from. Um, and our current balance as of um, November is 57,000. How much is the RCMP requisition? I think the reserve transfer this year is 20, is it? Or close to 20? What well, just involved? Right? It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just curious if, if the ten thousand was taken out, if the RCMP was paid out of there, do we have still like do we have enough to cover all that? Yes. So we're not taking the full RCMP requisition. We're trying to slowly get more and more out of our operational tax process, right? Revenue. So not the full fifty-seven is coming out. I believe in Councillor Lenz notice of motion in the last page. It shows twenty-six one one zero. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Judy. <clears throat> so we're looking at cutting seniors and we're cutting those grants and that type of thing. I think we have to also think that when it comes to taxes, it's not just about, it's about increasing your revenue, but it also comes back to what the assessment of properties are. So you got this thing from the, the realtor that you sent me and as I'm looking at it, Initially, I thought it was a 4% increase, and I said, well, that's wrong. So then I, but I got a better one this time. Anyhow, it shows that the rates from 2020 to 2021 are going to be a 1.25% increase, right? So that means that that appraisal rate or that tax rate, when the tax assessor does it, he looks at the sales and he looks at something else, we're going to get an increase there too, right? So trying to cut everything here. And this is just an interim budget. I think we would be kind of watch because we may balance out a little bit in the spring with that increase anyway. I'm not saying we shouldn't cut some things, but I'm, I'm saying watch how much we cut or we all or we're going to be putting it back in. Right? Yeah, and again, it's an interim budget. We don't yeah. pass the final until. The and my other so. my other question is on here we have transfer to reserves, which has gone up by twenty seven thousand. What's that line item, Patty, on the main intern budget? I think that's for the uh, police. No, no, right here. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, what are you referencing? So if you look at this 2022 interim budget, that I'm looking at just the front page and I went under expenditures and it says transfer to reserves it's under the requisitions landfill and RCMP. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the increase for the RCMP requisition. Right. 186,000. No, we always do a transfer. Oh, that's transfer two. Sorry. Yes. So that's the money that we budget in mostly our utilities that um, we put into the utility reserves. Okay. okay. So, and also, so saying that our utilities, this um, new fortress one that we've got coming, we could make a motion and take whatever we make that specifically for this year till we find out what's happening and we have other things come on board, transfer that into our budget, which would bring it down to what? Three point something percent? We'd bring it down 2.0. It's about 16,000 something for the Fortis franchise fees. Yeah. So you could make a one-time motion to transfer that to the operating budget from reserves. It would go to reserves because that's what policy says, but yeah. then council could make a motion to direct that into the operating budget. And that would get us down 2.01, 2.1, something like that. Which is a little, yeah, which is more reasonable. Okay. Because technically, Fortress runs the lights. We don't own any lights. That's correct. That's right. Okay. So. I'm going to take a comfort break before we go into the budget. <laughs> or do you want to just keep rolling, Mr. Mayor? I don't know. Um, it's up to the will of council. 
A motion we take a comfort break for 10 minutes, please. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Dana. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Haven't heard none. Call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried.
Mr. Mayor, we'll need a motion to come back in, and then we also need a motion to adopt the flagged items for information. Yep. So, uh, looking for a motion to go back into the public session. I make a motion to go back into regular session. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Haven't heard none. Call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried, and we're back in the public session. Now we're looking for a motion to accept the flagged items as information. Councillor George. I make a motion that town council accept the flagged items as for information as presented. Thank you, Councillor George. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? I'd just like to say thank you for very much to administration for preparing, preparing this information. Um, spending the uh, town's money is an important business and we need to be cognizant of that. And, uh, um, especially during times uh, that are tough. And so we appreciate very much the uh, information and the way it was presented it was very easy to read. Any other comments, questions, or concerns from council? George, turn your mic off, please. Thank you. Um, if there's no other comments, questions, or concerns from our council, then uh, call for a vote. Anyone opposed? And the motion's carried. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now we move on to the... <laughs> Sorry, I jumped the queue. Yep. Uh, 8.3, 2022 interim operating budget. The purpose of this report is to request that council approve an interim operating budget for 2022 to allow for the day-to-day -day operations to continue uninterrupted until council approves the 2022 final operating budget on April 20th, 2022. Recommendations that town council approve the 2020 interim operating budget as presented. The 2022 recommended interim operating budget was presented to council on November 17, 2021 for discussion. In the proposed 2022 Interim operating budget taxation revenue has increased by 3.62% over the 2021 operating budget. <clears throat> the 2022 interim operating budget total revenue is $3,531. Six, sorry, three million. I wish $3,531,674. The 2022 interim operating budget total expenses, $3,567,249. Um, amortization expense and for our new councillors, that's uh, when our assets um, depreciate. And so we have to count for that every year in the budget. Um, so it's backed out of, if you notice on the budget sheets, it's backed out of uh, the expenses. Uh, the difference is $35,575 or 3.62% to balance the budget. Strategic plan areas, a balanced budget ensures the residents continue to be provided municipal services, sustainable and safe infrastructure. The interim operating budget authorizes administration to continue with the expenses associated with the delivery of services until the final operating budget is approved in 2022. A healthy, vibrant community continues with current service levels in the community. Open and transparent governance, public presentations of interim operating budgets allow for public input. Other impacts? Legal, pursuant to Section 242 of the MGA, Council must adopt an operating budget for the calendar year. Summary, the proposed 2022 municipal budget requires a 3.62% tax revenue increase to deliver a balanced and fiscally responsible operating budget that reflects the program and services required to meet current resident business industry needs, align to Council's strategic priorities, retain fiscal sustainability both in short and long term. The proposed proposal manages the RCMP cost increases, loss of revenue at the Carol Mushmire Arena due to COVID-19, and a projected inflation rate to purchase goods and services to main service levels. It also provides a 1.5% cost of adjustment COLA for staff and council. Mm -hmm. Property tax rates are not set at this time. The property tax rates for 2022 will see first reading April 20th, 2022, when council has all the necessary information they require in order to set the tax rate. Upon council approval, administration will make the approved interim operating budget available for public viewing on the town's website and social media platforms. That's everything, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that. So I'm looking for a motion from council for this uh, interim operating budget. Deputy Mayor G. Uh, I make a motion that town council approve the 2022 interim operating budget as presented. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion from the council? Councilor George. I see where we have to have a 3.62% uh, increase in taxes. I also see that there's one item where we could save a point 
5% on this budget. And uh, it may be a controversial item, but I think it's a want, not a need. And that's our mayor's supper. Uh, that's a $4,000 expense. Uh, we didn't have it last year. Maybe this year is another year that we won't have it. We are talking about cutting expenses and that is one place where we could possibly cut 0.5%. Thank you for that, Councillor George. Anything from the administration on that? Mr. Mayor, much like the uh, communities in bloom expenses, I uh, see the mayor's supper as an economic development, um, satisfying one of the economic development priorities and uh, it brings industry, neighbors, residents, uh, councils from adjoining so um, yeah, I agree that we didn't have it last year, but uh, we are scheduling to have it this year and uh, hopefully uh, showcase our community. So just something to consider that it's not just uh, purely entertainment value. It really has an economic benefit, I believe. Um, again, up to council. Will the sun come up in the morning if we don't have it? Absolutely. <laughs> um, but yes, I would just like to point out, please don't forget the economic development um, impact of that event. Thank you for that. Councillor George, please turn off the mic. Councillor Len. Well, I, I love that economic development. We've had them um, for how many years and we didn't get no economic development out of it. It's a social gathering, which is nice. I, those are really nice things, but it shouldn't be at the taxpayer's expense. There's no economic, and, and don't put your head in the sand and say there's economic development, because there isn't none. Nobody's investing in the town of Bruderheim right now. They don't have money. And the, if I had $300,000, I wouldn't put in Bruder Hunter lose money at this time. So using that line is not a good line for me. Making a social gathering is a good line, but it doesn't make sense. And I agree with George. Thank you for that feedback. Council Len, please turn off your mic. Um, last uh, time this was on the budget, uh, I recall it being 2,500. Um, I'm not sure why it's 4,000 this year. Turkeys went up in price this year. Thank you for that Mr. Mayor, we do, Mr. Mayor, we do charge to attend the event. It's not a free event. Um, and the cost, of course, is for council and um, including that cost is council and staff and our uh, guest speaker, uh, guest speaker um, to present. So attendees do pay. Um, it's not a free event. Sorry, just looking for it. Um, I believe that was the difference. Um, the cost of uh, doing the event is more expensive, so we're still charging. So the other option would be to increase the cost of tickets if we wanted to reduce it by back to 2,500. We could uh, increase the cost, I think currently 25. We could probably increase the ticket prices if that was a desire. Council, again, you're talking about 1,000 or $2,000. So. Not that it's insignificant, but that is an option as well, is to remove the line item and increase ticket prices to cover all costs. Thank you for that. And um, I, I do take issue with the fact that there are people looking at Brookheim. There was a person that wanted to bring a hemp business to, uh, uh, to our community and look at purchasing a property recently. Um, I don't know if it's gonna follow through. And I know that the hemp company, um, attended our uh, mayor's supper and drew a lot of attention when uh, he was here. So, but is, is it a nice to have? I guess it falls in the category of depends on how you want to look at it. Thank you. Councillor Dana. I do think a ticket increase might be something to look into. Um, just experience with catering and stuff like that. For $25 for a ticket, I think it has increased. Um, so you might be able to look at something a little bit, increasing the tickets a little bit more to make some money. Back. Thank you, Councillor Dana, uh, Deputy Mayor Judy. And I guess um, also for looking at it, have um, try and showcase our members because I do know um, the guys from the hemp had they gained great contacts from that um, and people to look to do business with. So even some of our other newer businesses, and we do have people that have interest in Bruderheim then right now as businesses. Um, so helping showcase them as actually a positive thing for the community. 
because they're all struggling, but the more that we can get out there of what we do do and what we do have, um, I think it's a benefit by all means. So Mr. Mayor, just a point of clarity, if we cut out the mayor's supper, um, right now we have $2,000 in revenue and $4,000 in expenses. So if we were not to have the mayor's supper, it would only be a $2,000 impact, right? Because that's the difference between the revenue and expenses. Thank you for that. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is if uh, some of council has issues with the name of the event, I'd be certainly open to changing the name of the event as well. That's what's holding certain members of council back from wanting that event. Mr. Mayor, I did do a small presentation. I don't know if you want to go through it or just yeah, start going through the just to kind of, it's very short, just to kind of work through the budget, just for the members of our public that are watching, if they missed the original. So our priorities right now in our strategic plan is sustainable and balanced economy, sustainable and safe infrastructure, open and transparent governance, and a healthy, vibrant community. So the budget is based on those um, four strategic goal areas. Um, municipalities are in the quality of life business, providing value for taxes, rates, fees, and charges. Um, hundreds of critical and quality of life services or delivered data are supported by capital assets. So the difference between the operating and the capital. Some of the grants that are, are within our budget in the revenue side. Um, you say, you know, municipal sustainability initiative operating grant included and allocated towards recreation and the planning and development department. Municipal Sustainability Initiative Capital Grant included and allocated towards the 2022 capital budget. We receive FCS grants remain at current level. Allen Lamont County Recreation Senior Foundation are also projected to stay at the current level. And the arena advertising revenue is projected to stay at the current level. And we're assuming that the sum summer temporary employment program remains at current level. As you remember, a couple of years ago, it was cut out. So that affected the budget. Um, some changes from the November 17th presentation. Uh, we increased the Infinity Center revenue by $3,600 as we were able to rent out another office starting in January. Um, this resulted in a reduction to the recommended budget increase of 3.97 to 3.62. And we're actively seeking to rent out the uh, last office. Um, just one second. So to clarify, we have a new business starting in town in January? Yes, we are. Oh, so there are businesses looking to locate the burger. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Mayor, and I have to say that um, Mrs. Cote has a few other people that are interested in that other office, so it's exciting news. Um, so the 2022 operating budget, uh, the revenue is 3531674 just to explain to people how we come up with this uh, increase in budget. So to... Um, provide the same services that we currently do. We're projecting that the expenses will be $3,567,249. And so from taxation, we have to collect an additional $35,575, which equates um, to a 3.62% budget increase from last year. So and there last is a dollar had, figure attached to that, right? Yeah, so last year we collected $0 from uh, municipal taxation because there was 0% increase. Um, and here's your latest and greatest budget. Um, does council want to go through page by page or did council like, or does council just want to bring up items and they can, that they have concerns with the council want to pass the presented. I'm just kind of waiting for direction. Um, so, um, <clears throat> if we're going to go line by line, is there some way to increase the size of that? Because it's quite an eye test to try to read that from here. And the one thing that I wanted to mention that's important to think about is typically the interim budget, we end up uh, scrapping over it and we set kind of the course of direction. And then when it comes to the budget time in the spring, unless something really significant comes along, typically that just sails through because we've done all the scrapping now. So I, I know that um, it was said that well, we got until next spring, but typically what ends up happening is we kind of set the stage here with uh, the scrapping that we're doing now to scrimp and save to get to uh, what's deemed a reasonable increase. So, but is there a way to increase the size of what you got on the screen there? Um, did I put the, sorry, Mr. Mayor. 
And what does the will of counsel do? We want to go through line by line, or is there some certain ones you want to? I know Councilor George had something in particular he wanted to tackle right now. Well, Mr. Mayor, you have, I don't actually have the um, by department on this presentation. If Council, I could just leave this up for residents who can zoom in. Um, if we wanted just to go through the pages that you have in front of you, would that work for council? Um, if I could just go through department and maybe if anybody wants to uh, flag an expense, I think you were all handed these little packets. So if you flipped, the first page would be general administration. Is there any concerns that council needs more information on there? So council's basically looking at expenses. Um, I'm sure you don't want to do, decrease any of our revenue. Um, and again, between now, um, Mr. Mayor, that was correct. You know, we, we could continue to look for ways to increase revenue. And if there is an opportunity to increase revenue, again, the final budget may look different. So if there are any concerns with the expenses with administration or points of clarity that council wants. Mr. Mayor, the COLA is in here. Um, where where is, is the cool on here? Salary and wages. So again, the increase is only six thousand two hundred forty-two because we eliminated a position in administration. Right, and <clears throat> thank you. I think that's the only flag that was. Oh, franchise fees, Mr. Mayor. I got my master sheet here. Councilor Wing. Just to, uh, maybe you did mention it, but the council COLA is not included in this, is it? Mr. Mayor, it is. That's legal so, and legislative services under admin. So that will come out? Oh, actually, no, it's not. Or There's is that in a there, separate or? page, isn't it? It's under legislative services, sorry. Sorry, that's on the third last page. Legislative Service Council Renumeration would be under there. Um, for the future, would it be possible to number these pages? Absolutely, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> so yes, sorry, uh, Councilor Leco, Council uh, Renumeration is not under this one. This would strictly be salary and wages for staff. So Council is Renum not a... No, it's under Legislative Services on the third last page. Go through it at that time then? Yeah. So if the administration flags were um, the commercial industrial um, split, what's the amount of MSI? So those are revenue questions. Um, COLA was an admin question. Uh, franchise fees. And that's it. So COLA and franchise fees were the only flags that came to admin. So I don't know if there's any more clarity needed on those two points. Um, in our binder on page 11, um, we had talked about the water increase and uh, line number three on page 11 on the 2022 change request. It's, it, it specifically says an increase in the cost to purchase water from John S. Petit Water Commission of $10,000. So uh, you were saying that that's not included in here somewhere, but it, it's specifically mentioned here. So I just wanted to make sure that it's not in somewhere that we're not seeing. So the utilities, Mr. Mayor, again, I'll have to review that, but um, the utilities won't affect the overall operating budget, right? So. Yep, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. So the gravel is under the roads then. That's correct. So the only two items under general administration, which we're looking at right now, is whether council needs more information on COLA or franchise fees, or if they want to make a motion to change either of those items. When we passed the franchise fees, that was a bylaw, right? Right. So um, I would recommend that council, um, if wanted to change the reserve fees for budget, that we just make a motion for a reserve transfer of 16000 I have that number somewhere. Um, 16,861. Thank you. Um, that we do an administrative transfer of that amount. 
Okay, and that gets that gets the number down to what? Two point zero one somewhere around there. Okay, Councilor Wayne. Sorry, um, my director of ledge wants to say something. I'm sorry, oh, I just go ahead. wanted to just remind everybody that. that sorry. Just wanted to remind everybody that the council has approved the two percent uh, forest fees. It's through it's um, in front of the utilities commission right now, and the bylaw has not been formally passed. Mm -hmm. And so, just kind of keep that on the radar. That's not an absolute for sure yet, because mm -hmm. that process has not gone through the total. Um, what it goes needs to go through. It mm -hmm. probably will be in the spring before that happens. So it's not going to be this total sixteen thousand eight hundred. That's the projected revenue they say we're going to get. But what I'm saying, all I'm cautioning everybody is, is it hasn't passed Utilities Commission yet, and we haven't passed the bylaw yet. So, Mr. Mayor, Director of Corporate Services said you could say ACO for sure. Those are okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. I totally missed that. Thank you. This would follow under here, but transfers from reserves. What are, do you know what we've transferred over the last three years each year? Kind of how much we've transferred to cover uh, just to bring the, the rate down? Mr. Mayor, I don't think we have that with us, do we? No. Okay. Can we provide it just so we can kind of see? Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. My goal is to reduce that number every year. Yeah, it's a good goal to achieve. Um, under parks, there was some increases under parks um, besides the uh, cost of uh, contracted services. And yeah, under parks. No, um, I was just thinking of things to, to bring up. Uh, let's, let's go through page by page. Are we just going to go page yeah, by page? Yeah, we were going to go page by page. Okay. If that's okay, Mr. Mayor. I know the pages are difficult to follow along with. <laughs> It's okay, those were the only two for um, administrative service. Next two pages, emergency services, um, emergency management, um, protective services. Um, that was the RCMP requisition. Uh, there's the numbers there for you, Councillor Leco. the difference you're asking for the transfer from reserves. So in with the protective services, so when they come out, they offer, do they give any like um, packages, like pamphlets or links or anything? Do they supply us with anything like that? Like the RCMP, like for people who are looking to like for support on certain things, like um, well, I'd assume that would be under that. Maybe it's not, but um, they do community engagement, if that's the question you're asking, Councilor Jacobs. Um, so we have community engagement opportunities with the RCMP and enforcement services. Um, so RCMP are in Fort Saskatchewan, Enforcement Services out of uh, Shore Park. And um, yeah, they do provide some uh, literature and links that we provide to residents. And we usually share those through our social media or on our website. Not mm -hmm. a lot of luck with people picking up pamphlets in the office, that's for sure. I guess due to COVID, you wouldn't do Even that. before COVID, okay. nobody <laughs> wants pamphlets. No, I just thought like for like, um, if there's um, like domestic, Absolutely. And stuff like that, if they yeah. offered anything or links or, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, but Victim Services, absolutely. They're a great partner to Bruderheim out of Fort Saskatchewan. So um, they actually have a really good relationship with our Director of Legislative Services and um, are always giving our stats of our community, what's going on, and if we need to help with something. And uh, we also reference people to go to Victim Services or if FCS doesn't really deal with... Um, I think what you're referencing, it's more um, families first, victim services. So um, yeah, they do provide us with links to those and they're all in the same building, so which is great. The only reason I asked is just because it came across Facebook, um, just someone was looking for a link and support. Oh. So it just would have been, you know, to have that, to be able to reach out. And it's on our website. Get, if you ever want, um, just quickly go to the website and look for the link and then provide them that. We have all those supports on the, on the website. I do know that when the RCMP is involved in, in any kind of event where they think victim services is possibly required, they do offer that to those folks involved. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just a thought to try to um, move this along. I'm kind of curious as to uh, sensing council what 
percent increase is uh, something that's palatable for the group. Uh, in other words, like is two percent the number that we're aiming for? Is is three percent the number we're aiming for? And that would kind of give us an idea, and then maybe if we're going to entertain a motion to uh, move some money from reserve transfer to get to that number, and then we could move this process along a little bit. Uh, just thought for council to consider. Councillor Wayne. So are you saying to approve a transfer and then review this again at later and yeah, potentially change at that time? Yeah, I'm curious as to what number folks are thinking of is, is a good number, like um, 3.6 right now? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, so uh, is everybody comfortable with the 3.6%? What number are we looking for, Deputy Mayor? I like the 2.1 or 2.15 or 2.25. Pick one of the three. <laughs> and the rest of council? That's the way? I guess around the 2%, 2.2%, but in order to say, say that, I, I want to know that we're not just going to transfer money to, to say it's done. I want to know if we do the transfer, can we still look at ways to absolutely away at that and put the money back in? Sure. I just wanted to know what the goal is uh, that we're. Then we kind of got an idea what we're aiming for, right? Because we're kind of just shooting holes and we don't really seem to have a target. So I'm looking for the rest of the council their thoughts, like uh, Councillor George. I have a problem taking money out of reserves to make ends meet. If you take it out, you got to put it back in or somehow. I think we have to start doing some serious line item cutting and get down to where we should be. Uh, it might take us a little time, but. What percent increase are you thinking to aim for, George? Well, in reality, I'd like to see a no percent increase, but that ain't reality. Uh, around the two percent or less. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, I'm gonna say around the two percent mark. And just like George, I'd rather not just transfer all the money from reserves, see what we can cut and then transfer what we need to to get to where we want to go. Good. Yeah. And it also helps administration so they know what we're aiming at. The uh, rest of the council. Well, I, if you know me, I'm always a zero percent at all times. And, uh, and, you know, I have an issue here. We're paying of 10% here on this one letter. I want just to see a dress and take care of. Hopefully we can get that taken care of. But uh, I think we, uh, I agree with Ashley. 2% would be uh, sufficient to me if we had to do it. But I, I think there is a, we could do some fine tuning yet. Thank you, Councillor Lynn. Councillor Dean. I'm gonna go with what Wayne said. Um, like everyone's saying the 2% mark, um, but as long as we can just come back to it and kind of just go and dig a little deeper, so. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, uh, Councilor Wayne. Just another thing, like I have a hard time cutting, cutting, cutting and, and getting rid of it. We need to find a way to, if we're cutting it, how can we make it back up, right? An example just to throw out there would be, uh, you're talking about the mayor's dinner was brought up. If ticket prices were a little bit higher to cover some of that cost, so it wouldn't be such an increase. Sorry. Um, so, um, instead of cutting, looking at alternate ways, so like mayor's dinner, instead of paying a $2,000 price tag on that, going from 25 to 35 or $40 a ticket, right? Um, you say there's the, possibly another couple more people that want or have interest in Infinity Center. Um, that's another $3,600 coming in. So just not necessarily cutting, but finding, is tweaking or finding ways of, of 
cutting, but still not cutting it out of the budget. Does that make sense? Yep, increasing revenue, sure. So uh, which page are we at now? <laughs> We did protective services, so we're on common services. I'd like to keep on track. Okay, common services. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think the only flag there that we got was the salaries and wages was reduced. Um, so we explained that before. I think council's good with that. That's went down and went over to parks. Uh, roads. Um, again, uh, supplies and materials, we explained that one in the flagged item, $8,000 increase. So that's not just roads, that there's a number of things that are tied into that. Right? That's everything that along roads. So traffic signs, anything to do with maintenance of signs, road street, what they call it street furniture as opposed to park furniture. Um, so your garbage cans, your planters on main street, those sorts of things. But again, a very small percentage of your gravel and, um, Emulsions and other things are also in that line item. So knowing now that we did 21 signs in Brookside last year, or this past year, uh, have we addressed the, the worst ones? No, Mr. Mayor, we haven't. Not in town, no. But in Brookside, yeah. Yes. Okay. So again, we would be focused on regulatory signs. As you know, we're uh, doing asset management on our signs, and we had all our signs assessed by a traffic engineer, and they assessed which ones are critical, which ones are right. And just remember, if any sun gets knocked down, we have to replace it with TELUS bar. Some of our signs right now have the round um, bars. If you notice, it's dangerous if you hit it because it doesn't move. And so and it, we're grandfathered, like you don't have to run around and change all the signs. But as soon as you, if one's damaged and replaced, we have to do the upgrade to the TELUS bar and the high intensity sign. So um, water, again, um, Again, utilities, water, um, those all uh, just balance out, passed on to the in through the utility system. FCS, there wasn't any change there. Um, the reduction contract management increase, or was no, that was salary. Sorry, in arena. We're at arena. Yeah, I did skip oh, over the utilities please. because those are just passed on to the residents through utility fees and charges. Those don't affect the budget. Those items are the revenues and expenses are already zeroed out. Um, FCSS, nothing changing there. So the arena again, um, increase in wages that was explained. Uh, the Infinity Center. The increase was due to the um, revenue increase was due to the uh, extra rentals. So we've dropped um, office expenses. We lowered office because we're no longer paying for janitorial. Um, the renters now do their own janitorial service. And we're not offering, uh, because we no longer have an economic development officer, we no longer offer any sort of business support other than our heart and soul at the town office, that there's not a person dedicated to um, helping them with issues. And the support that we get from the um, Chamber of Commerce in the fort. Right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, community programs. Um, I don't think we had any flags, or did we? Oh, just the COVID money is still in there. Um, parks, contracted services, again, spraying pest control were the big ticket items there. And the communities in bloom, which we talked about in the flagged item. Economic development tourism, a lot have those reductions have to do with the grants we received to run those programs. If you remember, we got the one for women rising, so we're slowly working through that. Community hall saw no changes. 
legislative service, there's the remuneration. You'll see the budget increase $510 for the 1.5% COLA. Right, Councilor Wayne. Is that something we can look at as the COLA taking that out as well? I know it's not a huge amount, but we've all discussed, I kind of, I know it's gonna be a motion. Does that be a motion to take that out or? Well, it's be not, uh, yeah. So you'd have to make a motion um, and then council would uh, approve removing that. And then at the end of all the changes, we'll do one big motion to accept the budget as amended. Okay. But you'd have to do individual motions to change line items, if that makes sense. Right. Okay. I will, I would, I would make a motion to reduce the, or take the call out for council. I know it's not a huge amount, but I'd be willing to accept that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns from council? Haven't heard none call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Thank you. Uh, we're on economic development and tourism budget. Page. We're on legislative services. Yeah. Um, Mr. Mayor, the other flag by Councillor Campbell was Mayor Suffer. Did you want to address that there? Yeah, and that one is sitting under legislative services. Um, you mentioned that it's an economic development uh, initiative uh, as well. Why wouldn't it be under there? Mr. Mayor, it's always been there because it is branded the Mayor Supper. Okay, thanks. Deputy Mayor? So if I could make a motion, we could change how we operate that, still do it, but just change how we operate it. I'd like to offset it with ticket costs and hopefully look for a sponsor for your um, for your uh, speaker. Mr. Mayor, if I could just remind you that um, council and staff tickets are paid for out of this. So not to reduce the expense to zero. Um, otherwise we'd be, unless council wants to pay for their tickets on top of. I'm more than happy to pay for my ticket. I'm just mentioning that's how we pay for, and their wives, we've always paid for council and their, sorry, significant other um, ticket. So that comes out of that money as well. So how much would that be for staff and council? Because I don't want to take it out for them. If they want to pay for their ticket, that's more money into our pocket somewhere along the line. I don't want to take it out. So probably about 1500 So there's seven councillors. So if we're going to increase ticket prices to 30 35 Times that by like well, typically so about five hundred dollars to leave in the budget. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Wayne, thanks. Deputy. How many people usually attend this? That it's are usually paid? Mr. Mayor. It's usually sold out at about one hundred and twenty-two. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Mayor, like if we were able to get a speaker not to charge us, then we would want to pay for their ticket as well, right? And their significant other. Um, Mayor Choi um, bailed us out a couple of years ago. And of course we paid for his and his significant other's ticket, so. That's your wing. I was just looking like at $35 a ticket for 122 people is over $4,000. So that would cover the cost, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. I, yeah. Thank you. Do we have any motions coming from that information or we move it to the next page or Councillor George? I have no problem paying for our for tickets for this if it's going to mean that we uh, are going to uh, make a significant uh, change in our budget increase. I would have to say that uh, council pays for their own tickets and uh, and we try to uh, offset the cost through ticket sales. Well, we can certainly, um, as you've mentioned, bring that to council's attention and it's their prerogative what they would be doing with that. Thank you, Councillor George. Uh, Councillor Wayne? Am I correct? And you said that it would only be about a $2,000 savings though? Is that correct? Mr. Mayor, through Council Echo, that's correct. And again, we always look for sponsors. Um, this is worst case scenario that we don't get any sponsors. Yeah, and I've noticed on the economic and development 
um, page under advertising and promotions, you've reduced the budget two thousand dollars or Are we clear to move to the next page or about the cola? I made a motion to reduce the the supper supper so that uh, we're paying for staff and council, and it's their option if they want to pick their own ticket. Uh, how would that how would that only be a two thousand dollar savings, so Patty? So, sorry, Mr. Mayor, because we are charging for tickets right now about $25 a ticket. So even though oh, the okay. Mayor's Sopper cost us $4,000, we are bringing in $2,000 in ticket sales at $20 a person. That makes sense. Yeah. Now that you say it that way. <laughs> okay. Thanks. So we just need to vote on that motion that we're going to need here. Yes, Mr. Mayor, if you could make a motion to reduce the um, Mayor's Supper expenses to $500 then that would be an automatic um, to um, increase revenue. So if you could just say reduce expenses for the mayor's supper to $500, that would be a good motion. That's okay, same. so you can make that motion, Deputy Mayor? So you're making that motion, Deputy Mayor? Yep. Yeah, I am. Okay. Any comments, questions, or concerns from Council? Councilor Wayne. Mr. Mayor, sorry. <laughs> um, if that motion could read to increase revenue to 4,000, because it's still gonna cost 4,000 to put the event on. Sorry about that. So amend that and add the four thousand. So it's still going to cost us four thousand to have this, but it's only going to you know, to have the event, right? So we have to increase ticket sales, so revenue goes up, but we're only going to spend five hundred dollars because we're going to increase the sales, right? So, Mr. Mayor, the event will cost four thousand dollars. And so we'll be increasing the revenue from two to four thousand, so that'll balance. It'll zero out, right? That's what we're saying. Councilor Wayne, you have a question. I would be okay with that. I, if, if we sell it again at thirty-five dollars a ticket, it's going to be more than enough to cover the cost plus a couple dollars in the bank, kind of thing, if that. But it'll cover. So I'd be. Thank you, Councilor Wayne. Any other comments, questions, or concerns from Council with that motion? I, I do uh, remember when we ran the meetings before, and we this one has been debated lots of times, and uh, the uh, actual cost comes in usually around 2,500. I know you budget 4,000, but I, I know we've talked about this lots before. So uh, if there's no other comments, questions, or concerns, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Thank you. Now we can move to the next page. Uh, Mr. Mayor, planning and development um, increase for five thousand. That was to redo the land use bylaw. So that's for contracted services for the open houses, public hearings, advertising, all of it. And the library last item remains the same. I believe uh, Councillor Dana has a question. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. In regards to planning and development, is that where the permits and all that are? So I think we should possibly look at um, what we're, we charge for permits and all that stuff and see if, uh, sorry, that's not a really smart way of putting it, but what the price is, is like prices now, like if we compare it against like what everyone else charges for permits, maybe unless it is already up to date, something to look into to increase it. So Mr. Mayor, through Councilor Jacobs, that's done through the user fees and charges. And so um, that's what we do annually when we review that user fees and charges. We look at what the regional costs are for municipalities our size. And so, yeah, good point. Yeah, absolutely. And we do contract out that service. So um, to inspections group, majority of it. Um, so we get charged, right? What they charge, we're kind of at their mercy as well. And we have a contracted planner for the town, MPS. In the uh, user fees and charges section <clears throat> that we went through, that information is in there. Right? There's like pages and pages of it. <laughs> if you need to reference it, it's there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Len has a question. Well, you know, it's a contract services bothers me. 
I truly believe we can fine tune that. We, we don't have that much developing in town, none to very little at this time. And uh, I think we should shop that out. Uh, on contractors, we're paying way too much money for the services what are, we're getting. I truly believe, I think we have to look around, find somebody else, because uh, that's a high number for, for what we got going on. Mr. Mayor, lawyer is under there as well. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> just to speak to the uh, issue of any development, maybe you, can you mention that there is a developer looking at? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, we get uh, development permits, even not just the big ones that you're referring to. So not just the uh, industrial development or the residential development. Um, if somebody wants to do a deck or a hot tub or something like that, um, sometimes there's controversy between neighbors and uh, we have to um, get the planner and developer to approve all these developments. Uh, some people take down a house and put half back up. Um, it's very important that uh, they're not affecting their neighbor's lots and things like that. So. Um, Again, we're not lawyers, we're not planners, we're not engineers. Uh, engineers falls under there too. Um, making sure those drawings are tying into our utility systems correctly, making sure they're not impacting the overland drainage for the neighbors, for the community, tying into the systems correctly. All of that has to be approved. Sometimes there's public hearings, depending on the size of the developments, uh, all those sorts of things. Thank you for that clarification. Having said all that, I do think that there is merit in at certain points to look at our contracts that we do have to see if there's any significant savings that can be made by looking around at other options. Uh, that That's something worthwhile doing, I believe, right? Absolutely, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, because that's something that would be uh, falling under your question there, Lynn. Yes, I would really like to dig a little deeper into what, why we're paying so much for the work we're getting done and stuff like that. And that's a good idea, it's just to, Look into it. Mr. Mayor, we could provide council with um, some numbers that other communities are paying for contracted services. So Mr. Mayor, we can't go out to tender when we're under a contract. We can't do RFPs. We can't do requests for quotes. We can't do anything while we're under contract. So yep. unfortunately it has to wait till contract renewal. Yep, absolutely. And when is that? A uh, number of the contracts come up at different times, but I think all in the next couple of years, we'll be looking at most of the contracts. Very good. And if I'm not mistaken, our Canadian Rockies Hemp has a development permit in now for something else, right? They don't, Mr. Mayor. Okay, because I thought they had a, another development permit. They do, Mr. Mayor, but it hasn't been submitted yet. We're just uh, walking them through the process right now. Okay, and so there's a cost to the town for that? Absolutely. Of? Those large developments are very expensive to the town. Thank you. Mr. George. When I look at our expenditures and look at contract management and contract uh, services, I see an increase of close to $18,500 here. Um, that's a su substantial increase. Which page are you looking at, Councilor? Right on the very front page. We've got a contract manager with an increase of uh, close to $7,500. Contract services at an increase of over $10,000. So Mr. Mayor, contract management is the Strathcona County um, Master Services Agreement. And you signed a five-year contract mm -hmm. saying that it was going to go up 3%. I can't remember, Sharon, what was it? A certain percentage every year. Yeah, and um, so that's what that line item is, is the service agreement. It's a five-year contract. And the contract services, uh, we mentioned that, that's for your weed and pest control went up $10,000. Thanks for that clarification. And Mr. Mayor, if you remember too, last year contract management went up for mileage. The town now pays for mileage related to Bruder High mileage. That was new last year. Thank you. Um, clear to move to the next page or is there a next page? Are we done? Mr. Mayor, I think we covered all the pages. It's pretty much a council discussion now on the operating budget. Councilor Wayne. Just a question in regards to the library. Do we not receive funds from the library for um, utilities or anything? Okay. 
because I, I know. Mr. Mayor, they pay 11% of our total utility bill. And so that our utilities are paid under general administration. So it would fall in there as revenue because it offsets the cost of running an administrative building. Great. So they pay 11%. What would that? 11% of our total utility bills. Which would be, I know you don't have the number now, but can we get that number? Absolutely. So the utility expenses to run the admin building are under admin. So the revenue, because we only have one meter for everything, we charge them 11% of total cost. Right? But we can get those numbers too. So would that be going up this, this year due to any kind of cost increases or would it be same as years previous, do you think? Well, if they pay 11%. Yeah, it probably... depends on the utility usage, right? So I can do a five-year trend for you if you'd like. Yeah, because I know that they've but they budgeted an amount, and I just want to make sure that it's accurate both for them and for the town to make sure that um higher this year. And I don't know if they did. So that's why I was just kind of curious as to what the requisite or what was so we've increased our projected expenses for utilities. And um again, though it's if we have a warm winter, if we have a cold winter, it's very hard to judge, right? We haven't had an issue with the library not being able to make those payments in the past. So they must be, um, well, the library budget actually is on the agenda here, isn't it? So yeah, they've actually projected, they pretty much talked to us what we're thinking the projected is gonna be. Okay, cause I just, uh, okay. We'll talk about that at that time, I guess. I was just curious why I didn't show up on here as an initial. Um, yeah. Thanks, Councilor Wayne. Any other questions from? Council, um, I did read uh, today that uh, the premier was talking about significant uh, dollars going towards helping uh, offset the cost for potential natural gas increase costs this winter. So hopefully that's something that comes through. That would be nice because I noticed in our budget we didn't really budget for much of an increase at all for natural gas, right? It's because Dennis is freezing us out of all our buildings. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now you get a hint of uh, the uncomfortability of the hockey arena rooms. Councilor Wayne. I guess that was my next question too, is there's some areas that were increased for gas, but some weren't. And I'm just kind of curious as to why. Um, I, I know there's um, addition to the shop, there's another office there um, and that didn't increase for gas. The arena, the town office, why those didn't increase, but the other buildings did. Mr. Mayor, as we replace infrastructure, it becomes more energy efficient. And I think I was talking about this before. Um, you know, we did all the light upgrades. We saw zero change, like we were supposed to get a huge reduction in the amount of our bills, but then electricity went up so much. So you don't see a savings. But on the flip side, when we started putting more energy efficient uh, HVAC systems, more lighting systems, heating system with <laughs> turning heat off at night, those sort of things, um, we do a variance report every year, right? And that's how we come up with, so we do a five-year average all the time and you see that things are over budget or under budget. And again, budget is just a best guess. And uh, we're trending downward on some of our utility costs. And so um, things like we reduce our internet charges by doing radio links, things like that. Um, we're always looking for ways to do that. And less use of our buildings, um, of course, last year would have brought the trending down. So. Again, in April, you might see that go up again, right? So just our best guess. Um, Deputy Mayor. Um, just a question about utilities, Patty. Do we belong, and I know we belong to the AUMA, are we looking to, do they have any utility providers in there that give us cost reduction? And is it AUMA that we go under? Mr. Mayor, through Deputy Mayor, we go through AMSC, is that correct? Yes. And we just negotiated a five-year rate. Yes, on both of those. So they're, how long have they been our utility providers? And as long as I've been here, so like 10 years or something like that, we go through AMSC and they buy block rates and they offer us when our times come up to recontract, so. Yeah, because I was, I was doing a budgeting with Housing Foundation today and uh, that came into play and they, tagged into a new company that is run by most of the government buildings. And so it's quite low. So I'm just wondering, that's why. 
Thanks. AMSC is a part of AMA. Yep. Uh, question on the loader. So in the capital budget, we're talking about uh, getting rid of that loader and then we would be rid of that debt servicing. What is that costing us a year for the loader? Mr. Mayor, payments 10,000, is that right? 10,000. So would that be coming out of the budget for next year? Mr. Mayor, if we were to sell the loader next year, it we would have to pay out the loader before we sold it. So. Um, yeah, and we're talking about doing that from reserve, right? Right. So then there would be a ten thousand dollar reduction on the operating because that would come out. Is that figured in this budget? No, the ten thousand's in right now. That's one percent, right? Yes, Mr. Mayor. When is that loader going to get sold? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, it's not looking good right now. We're uh, looking for a good used loader. That's it's not selling it. There's lots of people that. Um, I think if I can speak for Dennis, the average estimates around 45,000 for trade in value. Um, the problem is getting a good use loader. So you can't count on that 10,000 then. And what is uh, the council's next item to look at? A motion coming forward. Mr. Mayor, one thing that we have to settle is COLA, and that does not change with the final budget because it's effective January 1st for staff, just as a point of clarity. Um, we do need a decision this evening on that. Is there a motion coming about the COLA portion? Councillor George. I would like to make a motion that we set a COLA rate at 2.0%. Councillor George, I couldn't hear what the number was. I would like to make a motion that we set a COLA increase for staff at a 2.0%. Okay, thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns on that motion? Councilor Wayne. What was 1.5%, you said? Sorry, 9,000? Mr. Mayor, that's correct. A little over 9,000. And then 2% would be another. So it'd be 12,000 roughly. So currently we're not going down on our number, we're now going up. So Mr. Mayor, there's a motion for council not to have. Um, oh, we passed that motion right now. So we're just talking about staff right now, just for clarity. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, if you mind, uh, I could amend that motion to 1.5. Okay, thank you, Councillor George. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Hearing none, they'll call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And motion's carried. Any other motions? Because currently we haven't cut anything uh, other than the, a little bit of the cost on the mayor's supper and our five hundred dollars. That's your name. Uh, please turn on your mic, Councillor Wayne. I forgot what I was going to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come back to you. Deputy Mayor, did you have your hand up? No. Uh, Councillor George has his hand. <clears throat> There's one other cut that I'd like to see, and that's in. Uh, a lot of us attend committee meetings in town here. We used to get a we get a twenty five dollar honorarium for this 
I'd like to see that cut to zero. <clears throat> Um, before I uh, accept that motion, what would be the impact on uh, dollar figure for that? Sorry, Mr. Mayor, that's a policy, so that would require um, a policy change. Okay, uh, so we can't make that motion right now. You could make that in. We could make that before the final budget, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so then we could just hold on to that motion, Councillor George, and then bring that forward. At a later date. Is that acceptable, Constable George? So, Mr. Mary, the motion would have to be, um, yeah, to amend that policy. Yeah, I haven't then. accepted that motion, so um, I'm just asking if Councillor George could make that motion at a later date. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I will make that motion at uh, the uh, final budget review. Okay, and then. At that time, then we would know what the dollar value would be. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Deputy Mayor, Judy. Just so you know, George, you're not going to cut an awful lot because very few charge for, I don't know if anybody charges for in town meetings. <laughs> so we're not cutting a budget item, just saying. <laughs> okay. I think we're on the right path of cutting, but we need a bigger knife to cut. <laughs> bigger. <laughs> That's exactly where we're, we're, we're working up to it. So um, is there anywhere else that uh, Councillor Councillor Wayne? I just want some just clarity as to where we are. So mayor's dinner, we're looking at reducing that, but charging more per ticket to cover the cost. And that's it so far. And uh, and, and council five hundred dollars approved the, the one point five percent increase for uh, cola for staff, but that's already built in here. That's right. right. Yeah. So earlier you talked about um, transferring ten thousand dollars out or whatever that number was. Ten thousand from the search. Yeah. Um, would bring it down to about two point six percent. We, if we look at the infinity center, if, and again, we're just kind of hoping, but there's another, there's some income coming from that. Um, so between that and the mayor's dinner, that's well, half a percent, but um, it's working at it, but it's not really cutting anything. Um, what was there a mention again of the $16,000 from franchise fees, but we can't do that until it, Passes, is that correct? Mr. Mayor, Council could make a one time motion to transfer $15,000 from the utility reserve, which is where the franchise fees are going. It doesn't have to say ACO or Fortis, just do a reserve transfer from right that reserve to the operating account. Well, it doesn't matter. It's all if you just say 15,000, that would bring it down 1.5 or 10,000 or just. But before you do that, Councillor Wayne, I uh, also wanted to point out that we could also remove the 5000 for the community float because we just used a truck anyways, and that's $5,000. So then we could just look at a $10,000 uh, transfer instead of uh, 15000 and would do the same effect, right? But again, just for clarity, it can, we don't have to take that full amount. It can be adjusted at a later time, right? If something comes up that all of a sudden we've won a lottery somehow. Okay. So Mr. Mayor, we don't do reserve transfers till year end to see where we are. And so if council made that motion now to transfer to, to as Mr. Mayor um, said, remove the $5,000 for the float and then do the $10,000 reserve transfer, um, that would bring you down 1.5. That includes the mayor's dinner reduction and the into consideration yeah. as well? The mayor's dinner and the uh, council renovation is about like 0.13 comes down. So we're like hovering around 3.5 right now. Just waiting for Councillor Wayne to finish and then it'll be Councillor Lynn and Councillor George. I see your hands up. 
Okay, thank you. Um, Council Land. Well, you know, I look at that franchise fee, it, it's basically a tax increase. It's basically taking the money out of the taxpayer's money pocket. And I have no problem taking that transfer fee, which is what comes up to $15,000. And take it because it is tax dollars. It's, it's coming from the taxpayers, taking the transfer fee and taking it out of that transfer reserve right away out of the utility reserve, put it into the to the budget, and that'll help us considerably. So, Councillor Lynn, are you making a motion? I'd like to make that motion that we uh, the the franchise fee that amount be transferred to the interim budget, taken out of the reserve. So, an amount of fifteen thousand. Yeah. Okay, I accept that motion. And uh, any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion, Councillor Wayne and then Councillor Ashley. If we've already found about the five thousand dollar mark, what, can we drop it down to ten thousand? No, but then now, but no, we still take those other things out too. We, we're going to go, like we said, let's put a bigger knife into the bread. The sourdough bread. Is okay. okay. Yeah, we got to turn off a couple mic. Okay, and then Councillor Ashley. Sherry, didn't you say that sixteen thousand wasn't for sure money that still had to go through utility board? That's for the Fortis, um, but um, I think CEO Patty can clarify further that we can use uh, franchise fees from Atco Gas. Yep, because we're not specifying which company uh, franchise fees; it's just franchise fee, right? So thank you for that question. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Okay, haven't heard none, call for a vote. Uh, anyone opposed to that motion? <coughs> We're not ready to decide that one yet. Think about that. Not, not ready to vote on that yet? Okay, well, we'll hang on to that vote then. Mr. Mayor, that motion, um, if you were to accept that, can you please include RU3? as the reserve to be taken from. So that's a friendly amendment, uh, Councillor. That's where our franchise fees go. Pardon again? Uh, RU3, reserve utility account number three, is where the franchise fees go. So if we could just add RU3 to the motion. Okay, I'll make a motion. It's an RU3 reserve. Add it to the motion. Thank and you. I don't know if we have to wait. I think it's a, it's an issue. It's getting pretty late, folks. I don't know if we're gonna. So let's, what let's, was that let's, let's, down let's down move down. it on. So, Mr. Mayor, we're at 15,000 was the motion. So, we were at three, so it's around 2%. Thank you for that. Any other comments, questions, or concerns before I call for a vote? Councillor George. George, please turn your mic on. We're still not doing what we're here supposed to be doing. We're here to to uh, to uh, operate within our budget, not taking money out of our reserves. Uh, I don't go with that. Uh, I still think we should be looking at ways to cut. We've already cut uh, five thousand off the uh, the um, float. We've cut with the mayor's. Um, dinner. Sorry to interject, but we have yet for the float but anyway these are things that we were looking at um one of the uh, uh one of one was uh, another one we could look at again is uh, the uh, programs uh, uh five thousand dollars there uh, it's a nice thing to have but is it needed uh we still got to start looking at the, the needs, not the wants. Thank you, Councillor George. Please turn your mic off. And then Councillor Wynn and then Councillor Lett. I guess I, I, would, I would be somewhat okay with this as long as we can go back with a fine tooth comb and over the next couple of weeks and see where else we can make some more changes. Um, absolutely. We still have to pass the final budget and we can debate at that time. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, just for clarity, we won't be bringing this back to council till spring. Yep. Uh, Councilor Lynn? Well, I, I just want a clarification on this. It's not really taking out of reserve because I've always been opposed to franchise fees. 
So uh, we've, we've, we did it, we increased the franchise fees. Now that's coming out of the taxpayer's dollars. It's not reserve, it's strict coming from the taxpayer's dollar, just pointing to a direct account. But I'm saying now we just redirect that money to, to assist with the budget in these times and then like in the future. And then we can still look at a lot of other cuts in the future. I, and that's all the way I look at it. Thank you for that, Councillor Len. Any other input from Council before we vote? Councillor Ashley? Could you just um, give uh, tell me what the franchise fees are? Just explain to me what they are. Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Carter, so franchise fees are on your utility bills as a resident. Uh, I'm not sure if you've ever looked on your utility bill, there's a whole list of things. And so um, the town of Ruderheim allowing uh, Fortis and ACO to use our um, right of ways, they collect franchise fees from you, the user, and they give those to the town. And so the town has the option to do 0% franchise fees, up to 2530, depending on the utility company. And this year, um, council, so that comes up every year, or every every year they come up for discussion. And um, this year, council approved um, for the first time putting a franchise fee on Fortis. Um, so that's an extra income that we didn't normally have. So that's what council's talking about. That goes into utility reserve because you, those utilities, gas and power are in the utility corridors and we use those for future utility repairs, upgrades, maintenance. Um, so they're helping maintain the property that they're situated on, right? So that's the idea. And so council's suggesting that this one time this year, it's brand new. Let's put that into the operating budget to offset the impact to the residents. That's sufficient? Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with this motion? Any more debate? Deputy Mayor, you were looking for more time? No, I guess I'm ready. You're good now? Yeah. Okay, so we'll call for a vote. Anyone opposed to this motion? And one opposed, the motion is carried. So now the um, percent or the increase is looking at what kind of number? Mr. Mayor, we're hovering around 2%. Okay. Um, would someone be willing to make the motion to remove the 5,000 for the float under community programs? Councilor Ashley? I motion to remove the um, float under the communities and programs for $5,000. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Um, council, um, definitely I agree that we need a float for our community to promote our community. Is this the right year for that kind of a want? Um, uh, it's very debatable. And is there any other comments, questions, or concerns from council with this motion? Councilor Dana. We just have to use our imagination now, that's all. <laughs> She's already an elf. <laughs> Any other comments, questions, or concerns? Um, just one question. So we take that out, and then what is our number looking like? Mr. Mayor, 1.48. Thank you. OK, uh, call for a vote then. Anyone opposed to this motion? And the motion's carried. Any other motions coming forward, or have we sufficiently debated this enough? Councillor George, please turn. I brought it up, uh, the uh, community programs. Uh, something we should look at. It's a nice want, but it's not a need. Um, are you making a motion? Yes, I will. I'll make a motion that we delete the community programs for $5,000. Which line item is that? Are you talking about the one that we just did, or is that a different one? No, it is not. It's, uh, you're, you deleted the, uh, the uh, float. Oh, Mr. Mayor, uh, through Councillor Campbell, are you talking about the Bruderheim Community Investment Program yeah. for 5000 Okay, thank you for that uh, motion. Please turn off. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Councillor Dana. Can you just explain that one quickly? 
Absolutely, Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Jacobs. So that um, fund, again, just quickly, um, we the council gets a lot of requests to forgive rentals, mm -hmm. to sponsor things, to help nonprofits develop programming, to deliver programming in the community. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have budget for that unless it's put in the budget. So we started the Bruderheim Community Investment Program. And so nonprofits um, at our school, um, churches can apply. And um, things like what are things in the past that have happened? Um, they've had a, an event at the egg grounds or the seniors put on an event and the school we helped with new lockers and things like that. Um, during COVID, we helped buy um, a laptop for the seniors, a laptop for the egg society, just so they could start their programming and meetings virtually. Um, so council supports the nonprofits to be successful. BMSA got um, those rink dividers for littles, helped pay for those um some other things like that um yeah and so it's a formal application grant program and instead of the one-off council trying to decide did we give to this right and so it really supports the nonprofits to deliver programming so this is what you're thinking that we should cut out george yes uh uh it's patty you related to she hadn't had any applications was it it's within the last year. Mr. Mayor, not for programming. But we and got we got applications for COVID assistance. But this this was for programming, not for to help uh, other things as as you had mentioned. It's been used where it was not designated. Mr. Mayor, just to remind Council, there was a motion to allow um, the expenditure of the BCIP for COVID last year. Um, administration brought that to Council to ask if we could redirect those funds because our nonprofits were unable to fundraise during COVID. Yep, thank you. Um, was there somebody else that was? Councillor Lynn? Oh, no, Deputy Mayor, do you have your hand up? So, um, although we want to cut our budget more, sounds good. Um, I think we still have to look at our nonprofits out there trying to do some type of um, programming, helping people get out of their homes, get over the COVID, uh, learn how to live with COVID and move forward. Um, that adds a better positive mental health day, if anything else. So I'm a little bit leery on cutting it. Whether we get it or not, that's up to them. If they don't apply for it, well, I guess it's money in our pocket. I don't think it's a big line on should be cutting. Thank you for that, Councillor, our Deputy Mayor Judy, Councillor Len, and Councillor Wayne. I, uh, I think we should have to leave that in place because I'm with the seniors and the seniors even are having a hard time right now. And they, they, they need any assistance in all the groups in the town, minor sports, egg society, lions, everybody and all the volunteer groups are working because of the COVID, they're suffering hard. And we have that money there. We can assist sometimes with certain people and certain projects. And I think it's a good, a good fund to keep going. Thank you, Councillor Lynn, Councillor Wayne. I agree with the two of you. It should stay in place. Um, over the last year, um, there hasn't been much to apply for because they haven't done much because everything was shut down. And I think going forward, there's gonna be some support needed to, to grow the nonprofits, to support them. Um, Honestly, 5,000 is not enough, but I don't want to ask for more. Um, so I, I think it should stay in there myself. Thank you, Councillor Wayne. Any other input from Council before we vote? Uh, Councillor Dino. I agree with all of them about keeping that. I think it's more beneficial to our community mm -hmm. looking in the big picture moving forward. So thank you for that. Um, I would have to agree. Um, thank you for the motion, Councillor George, and bringing forward uh, the, the idea of trying to make uh, significant inroads into our budget. Um, this is one area where I know that uh, is mentioned about the seniors and the seniors are uh, struggling and looking for help. And um, this kind of a program would be something that they could look to for support. Um, so uh, I don't think I could support this motion at this time. Is there any other comments, questions, or concerns? Okay, call for a vote then. Anyone uh, who, who all, please vote all opposed to the motion. And the motion is not carried. Thank you. Is there any other motions uh, as far as the budget?
Deputy Mayor. So I would like to amend my original motion so that Town Council approve the 2022 interim budget as presented. Amend it to the 2% um, increase. <laughs> Is everybody able to hear that? Did, I not Did you hear me? Okay. You didn't hear me, George? So I want to amend my original one of uh, the 2022 interim operating budget that I made at the beginning, rather than to the 3.6% to the 2% increase. Mr. Mayor, we're at 1.48. Patty, I said 2%. <laughs> that was until the something got until taken The float out. was cut? The float, sorry. Okay. Yeah. I had it at the 2%. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. So your motion is going to be for what? 1.48. Thank you for that. Okay, I accept that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? All, all I want to say is that there have been uh, many, many budgets debate, debated in this town, and they've gone much later than this. So I think we've done a good job here, and thank you very much, everyone, for all your efforts. Uh, Councillor George, would you like to make a comment? Please turn your mic on that uh, we take a deeper look at this budget come in the final budget. Absolutely, that's uh, part of what we do. Thank you for that, Councilor George. Please turn your mic off. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with motion at hand? Hey, haven't heard none. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried, thank you. Great job, everybody. Now we can move on to 8.4. We'll see how long that one takes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Purpose of this report is to request that Council approve the 2022 capital budget. The Town Council approved the 2022 capital budget as presented. The 2022 capital budget was presented to Council on December 1st, 2021 for discussion. The total of the 2021 capital budget is 635,000. The capital budget is funded from NSI Capital of 580,000, reserves of 20,000. CCBF of 35,000, formerly fondly known as the gas tax. Strategic plan areas, planning and design of future assets as well as the rehabilitation and revitalization of current assets, plan maintenance and life cycle repair, the creation, purchase and construction of new assets and public presentation of the capital budget to allow for input. Pursuant to section 242 of the MGA, council must adopt an operating or capital budget for the calendar year. Building a responsible capital budget involves allocating resources to meet both today's needs and the requirements for long-term financial sustainability. A number of factors must be examined in terms of capital projects. The pressures of infrastructure maintenance growth and new capital projects must be balanced against impacts of future operating budgets, staff resource and available funding. It is critical to rethink, revitalize and, re and preserve our capital assets in order to meet community priorities accommodate a vigorous and resilient economy and continue to provide the essential services residents rely on each day for health, safety, and enjoyment. Upon council approval, administration will make the approved capital budget available for public viewing on the town's website and social media. We've attached the, and just a short budget for people watching presentation um, in case they didn't know the difference between capital budget. Um, it's for planned maintenance and life cycle, as I mentioned. Uh, one-time emergent maintenance and repairs, rehabilitation, revitalization, planning and design of future and the creation, purchase, construction of new assets. Some of the challenges, maintaining current infrastructure, bridging long-term funding gaps, balancing the capital needs for today and the future, MSI funding being reduced in the future. Uh, capital assets are such things as facilities, parks, vehicles, roads and water lines are the backbone of every community. It's critical to rethink, revitalize, and preserve our capital assets. Um, a number of factors must be in examined in terms of capital projects. The pressures of infrastructure maintenance, growth, and new projects must be balanced against impacts on future operating budgets. And here's the budget, Mr. Mayor, for council approval. Looking for a motion from council for the capital budget for 2022. Deputy Mayor. Um, the town council approved the 2022 capital budget as presented. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Councilor Len. I was looking at that loader. The previous loader was a debenture, am I correct? Mr. Mayor, through Councilor Falardo, that's correct. The new loader won't be debentured this time? No. So we're playing directly with MSI funds? That's correct. Okay, so 
It's a win-win. There will be no debt load after we clear up all everything else with a loader. So we'll be after next year, if we sell a loader, we're, we're going to lose that $10,000. we are not going to eat a $10,000 a year bill on that. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Through Councilor Flotter. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Any other comments, questions, or concerns? And Mr. Mayor, just a point of clarity, that payment is made from reserves. So transfer in, transfer out. Yep, thank you. Any other comments, questions, or concerns? Um, I have a question. Um, the force main bursting replacement 375, um, it was mentioned when we went uh, around the circle with that one uh, meeting ago, it was only for a portion of the pipe. Um, will we be coming back to do the rest of that pipe then? Mr. Mayor, we would be looking at that in the future. For this year, we're looking at 500 meters and uh, budget permitting and funds available. We will be looking at uh, assessing the rest of that uh, force main line. Okay, and you can do uh, one portion at a time. You, can, you don't have to do the whole shot at once to be effective for this type of repair. I'd love to do the whole shot, right? But we don't have the funds for that. So the, the, the demand right now is the repairs that were done back in 2012. Um, they need to be addressed now. They are they're failing again, and if we don't address it now, we'll be dealing with an environmental issue, as well as a residential issue, not being able to dispose of sewage. Okay, and this type of repair is typically good for extending the life, uh, approximately how long of that piping? Well, most sewage systems are always based on uh, a lifespan of 25 to 35 years. Um, there are point of uh, just a point is there's some water systems water lines that are in this town that are well over 50 years old so uh it's just a number um it all depends on how it's been run yeah i oh, understand uh, i'm what i'm specifically asking is this repair what kind of uh, lifespan can we expect out of that minimum 25 years okay thank you That's what and if we look after it we'll get our 50. yes what do we need to look after it I Regular can't say it in public session. And everything else. Ashley got that. <laughs> Not use wipes. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, and um, I, again, I uh, just wanted to talk about the floor cleaner. So it's $15,000 touch. And we're going to be saving $15,000 worth of labor um, from folks not having to mop the floor. As we discussed earlier, and that was at the last meeting, uh, and I believe Councillor Campbell, uh, and yeah, it was Councillor Campbell, but uh, whatever, we did discuss it. There's other factors other than just labor costs, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, there is other factors in terms of hygiene. Uh, we have to, those floors that are there, they have cracks. They need a vacuum type floor cleaner to be able to remove everything that's getting caught in between. And there's a tremendous amount of bacteria that formulates in there. Um, and that's because of the type of flooring that we have. So uh, I think we covered that last time. And I, I, I think I was clear on exactly why we needed that floor cleaner. Okay. And so in the dressing rooms where there's benches, how is it going to get to, to cleaning the floor and cleaning the bacteria underneath those benches? So on the particular one that we're looking at, it actually has a they call it a mouth extender. It, it goes out. And what we can't get underneath the benches, again, we have to get with the mop. What doesn't get there? I mean, we have to get it somehow, right? But we still have to address it. But the big part is the cracks in the type of flooring, which you are very well aware of because you're in there quite a bit. <laughs> Thank you. That's very dang. You had a question? So right now, they just use just mop, a mop in a bucket and just pour the solution and off they go. So I guess with having this piece of equipment, you're going to be using a specific amount of solution too. So you're probably going to be saving money on that too, because you're going to buy it in bulk and only use so much, right? So in the long run, I know I get carried away with floor cleaner, right? So, you know. Thank you for that. Any other comments, questions, or concerns from council with the capital budget? Councilor George? Um, the total expenditure for the loader is $125,000. Is that including the, the trade-in value? So, so 
this loader would be over and above the $125,000. Um, what size of a loader are you looking at? And what make are you looking at? Uh, these are things that we should be uh, discussing. Uh, and uh, uh, what, what do we want to accomplish by purchasing this loader as far as efficiency and economy? Mr. Mayor, through Council Campbell, um, if I could address that, we're just looking for the approval of 125,000. Um, I think we hired Dennis to decide on what we need, what we don't need, and um, I very much trust. And of course, we'll come to council to inform, but um, as you know, the one we have is too small. And again, um, for the it's being overused. It's probably the that and the uh, skidster are the things we use it all year round. And again, it's just a replacement. It's not an additional asset, right? So um, it's nearing 10 years old. And as you know, for asset management, those need to be replaced equipment. It was approved in the uh, five-year capital plan. So um, I'm not sure we need to get into details what color paint and what size. Um, council needs to be comfortable with the price. I want to know what we're buying. I don't... A loader. Uh, yeah, I got a loader at my farm too. It's called a shovel. There's a big difference. Uh, I don't think he knows what he's buying. Yet. If you don't understand, um, Mr. Mayor, gonna, I think I'm I do gonna, understand. Um, uh, just a minute. Okay. I was sat here one time and we bought a piece of equipment. It cost us $117,000. I don't know to this day whether we've got our dollars out of that. And this is why I'm asking these questions. What are we buying for this dollar? So, Mr. Mayor, we don't know what we're buying yet. And Councillor Campbell, as soon as one comes available, be able to provide more clarity on that, right? And we know that we need one that's good quality and used. We can't afford new. Um, so, yeah, we're just saying we're going to start going shopping. And is this an uh, okay number to be shopping with? Right? Because we're buying used. If we knew new, Councillor Campbell, we could absolutely tell you we're buying a green one, that it's a 450 and has this and that. Um, but again, we're buying used and we'll try to get the best. And we might come back to council and say, you know what? It makes sense that we spend 160,000 because that's a better product. It comes with more attachments. We might right, come up with something really good. Um, but at this time, we're just saying we're gonna go shopping for our loaders. This is an okay number to start with, so. This, this is why I asked for clarity. This is a big dollar item and uh, uh, Council should be privileged to more information when you come forward with these things. Uh, thank you for that, Councillor George. I think that we can trust our public works uh, director to come up with the best equipment for us and he's not let us down in the past. So um, I do have a question though, that uh, machine that we're looking at buying uh, was mentioned 10 years is magic number. How old is this type of machinery we're, we're buying? You're, Mr. Mayor, you're asking how old of a machine am I looking at buying? Right now, I'm not looking at any one particular machine. Um, unfortunately, there's just not a lot out there. Uh, the BC floods have taken most of the used equipment away from our province and other uh, neighboring provinces. Um, just in a little bit of research I've done in the last three weeks, there's very little out there. So we're gonna be at the mercy of, of what comes available after the BC uh, repairs um yeah so i haven't got anything picked yet whatsoever so yeah no i'm just curious like is it going to be only four years old and we get another six years out of it before we start looking to replace it or because so, so the I'm, age of the equipment is not what we look at we look at the hours of the equipment that is the number one factor um similar to mileage we look at hours okay i wanted that clarification thank yeah. you thank you before we purchase this equipment, I would like to see a mechanical report on it. And not just hours, hours can mean anything, sitting idling or whatever. It's a mechanical equipment efficiency report. And uh, anything that I've purchased in the, in the past um, it definitely comes with that report. Um, Again, this is not my first rodeo. I've bought an equipment before, so I do make sure that we get what we need and that it's it's in good shape and it does come with those inspection reports. So thank you. Okay. Um, are we needing a comfort break? 
oh yeah sure um um i had four hours sleep last night so yeah i know about being tired um so i th i think again um we we can uh, um trust our public works director to get the right machine i just wanted to know um that you're not just looking at the age of it as the only driver so is there any other comments questions or concerns with this motion okay haven't heard none call for a vote anyone opposed to this motion and the motion's carried and we move on to the next item and that is uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm just going to excuse my director of public works and my director of corporate services. They don't have to hang around for the rest of it. I thank them for giving us their time. So yeah, thank you very much. For I'd, like to, I'd like to take this time to thank Dennis for informing us for all the things that are happening and giving us a, a very useful report. I uh, also wanted to thank Sharon. It's help, helpful to be able to know what number we're getting to when we uh, we're reducing things. Thank you. So now we're at eight point five. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to request the Town Council review the Metro Kalina Community Library budget. The Town Council accept the Metro Kalina Community Library budget as information. Council gave third reading to bylaw 02-2018, which outlines the requirements for the operation of the Metro Atlanta Community Library on January 17, 2018. Strategic plan areas, communications with community groups and organizations to help build capacity for their programs and volunteers and to engage citizens, community groups and organizations to identify program needs. Public presentation of budgets allow for council and public input. Other impacts, Alberta Library Act, Chapter L-11, one of the revised statutes of Alberta, 2000 Municipal Government Act, Chapter M-26, RSA 2000, Bylaw 01-2018, Established Municipal Library Board, Section 5, BD, outlines requirements for budget preparation and follow processes. The Metro Kalana Library provides services to residents within the community with some financial assistance from the Town of Bruderheim. As per bylaw 01-2018, the chief administrative officer must review the budget annually and town council appoints, reappoints to the board members of the annual organizational meeting of council. The town of Bruderheim auditors complete the annual audit of their financials. Metro Clinic Community Library board members will receive confirmation that town council review the budget as information and we've attached the budget for council's review. Thank you for that. So we're looking for a motion from council. Would someone be willing to make that motion? Councillor Wayne had his hand up first, thank you. Uh, the Town Council accept the Metro Kalen Community Library 2022 budget as information. Thank you for that motion. And any comments, questions, or concerns from Council with that motion? Having uh, gone around the bush about budgets, maybe we're budgeted out. Uh, Councillor Len. Well, I, I just noticed that you are. Uh, You've got a cash flow and total expenses. You have a, is that a deficit of ten thousand? Councillor Campbell, can you? I think mm -hmm. don't they have cash on hand? So they're just saying their expenses are projected to be ten thousand more than their revenue this year. Because I think they came to talk to me about they have a little bit of a cushion cash savings account that they're having to, to dig into right now. Okay. So it's costing more to run the library than they're bringing in. So is this just a short term? Is it will be corrected in the, in the near future? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Aleko, do you have any insight on that? To my understanding, I was not the first part of it, just the second part, but um, there, will, there won't be a shortfall in the end. They will have funds in the bank. Um, the library re relies on uh, grants from the government or money from the government, and it comes at certain times of the year. Um, so my understanding of talking to them is they will not have a shortfall. Thank you very much. Good question. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with this motion? Okay, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to this motion? And the motion is carried. So we can move on to 8.6. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Administration, the purpose of this report is to finalize the reciprocal use agreement between Elk Island Public Schools and the Town of Berterheim. The Town Council approved the reciprocal... Oh, Mr. Mayor, sorry, I forgot to end this. <laughs> My apologies. No um, the Town Council approved the reciprocal use agreement for the Town of Berterheim and Elk Island Public Schools for the period of September 1st, 2021 to September 1st, 2026. Council approved the reciprocal use agreement for Elk Island Public Schools and the Town of Berterheim on March 13th, 2019. The agreement was to expire on August 31st, 2024. During the past two years, it was found that areas of this agreement were not clearly defined and led to conflicting interpretations. Additionally, there were changes made in the Municipal Government Act and the School Act that affects how municipalities and school boards interact and share responsibilities. Strategic plan areas, opportunities for community partners to share resources and use of facilities. Open and transparent governance, a community that is educated on responsibilities and limitation of council administration. Changes made in the new agreement include under operations, added a section on outlining responsibilities of the town when using board facilities, now number five, added a section on outlining responsibilities of the town for town sponsored events, now number six, expanded the clarification of cost charge related to grounds maintenance. This information was not clarified in the previous agreement, now number seven was number five on the existing agreement and the prime use of facilities. Um, existing agreement items one and two were combined and expanded for clarification. Reciprocal use of facilities, expansion of number one and clarification on booking board facilities, removal of number three and number four as they were included in the prime use of facilities, rewritten to change the composition of the group reviewing and implementation of the reciprocal use agreement. There will only be two operation staff, CEO, director of facilities or their designate that will be responsible for this agreement. Previously, there was also a council member and a principal of the school appointed to review and implement the agreement. The school principal is no longer making these decisions for the use of school facilities. Schedule A definitions, board representative changes director of facility services or designate. Grounds of maintenance definition was removed. Name of the agreement was changed to reciprocal use agreement from joint use and planning agreement. Definition of the board changed. Addition, added a definition of the community. And Mr. Mayor, we also noted um, administrative error. They had um, number one board representative definition was also in number 10. They removed number one since sending this package. Um, there will be a separate uh, planning and development agreement developed between Elk Island Public Schools and the town of Bruderheim to address changes to the MGA and the School Act, which state municipalities must develop joint use and planning agreements with school boards. A copy of this signed agreement will be shared with the Bruderheim um, senior management directors. Um, we've attached the old uh, agreement and the new one, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that. That was a mouthful. Uh, looking for a motion from Council for Councillor George. I make a motion that Town Council approve the reciprocal use agreement for the Town of Bruderheim and the Elk Island Public Schools for the period of September 1st, 2021 to September 1st, 2026 as presented. Thank you, Councillor George. Please turn your mic off. Thank you. Um, the, was the previous agreement a five-year agreement? Mr. Mayor, maybe I'll get you to direct your questions to our Director of Legislative Service Development. She's very been involved with this for the last two years. It's been a lengthy process. Yes, the previous agreement was for five years. But what happened, like as explained in the... Um, uh, the preamble is that there was some areas in the agreement that weren't clear um, in terms of ground maintenance, for example, and then the um, Municipal Government Act and the School Act changed, which meant that some of the items in the agreement had to change as well. And so the big major change for this agreement um, is the clarification in terms of how we're charging them for looking after their grounds. And the second part was um, in the other agreement, town council was part of the reciprocal use committee, uh, the principal uh, town council, the CAO, and uh, a representative from um, their uh, board. And now it is just the C CAO or designate or facilities or designate because the school no longer makes those decisions. It's, it's facilities that makes it. And then what happens is it then it now allows for if those uh, groups don't get along, then it goes to the next level, which is their board, their superintendent and council. Perfect, thank you. Any other comments or questions or concerns with that motion? I haven't heard none call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And motion's carried. So now we move on to 8.7. Mr. Mayor, I just again wanna put a huge shout out to uh, Mrs. Cote. That was a lengthy process for the last two years. So thank you to her for getting that through. Insert. 
Um, Mr. Mayor, since we all work so hard this month, um, administration would like to propose that the purpose of this report is that council, the town council consider the cancellation of the January 5th, 2022 regular meeting of council. The town council approved the cancellation of the January 5th, 2022 regular meeting of council. Council approved the council meeting schedule at the organizational meeting on October 27th. Uh, strategic plan areas through social media and newsletters share information with community groups, organizations, residents related to the opportunities to attend council meetings. Uh, other impacts, Legislative Municipal Government Act, RSA 2000, Chapter M26, Section 199-1A. Administration is seeking council approval to cancel the January 5th, 2020 regular meeting of council. The administrative ministry to staff will be covering off for each other and utilize, utilizing the last two weeks of December as a time to refresh and spend time with their family. Through cancellation of the council meeting, staff will not be required to alter their holiday plans to prepare for council meeting on January 5th. The Municipal Government Act indicates that the public must be notified of when meetings are occurring. Information will be shared through our website, social media, and the newsletter. That's everything, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that. I'm um, looking for a motion from council for the cancellation of January 5th, Deputy Mayor. Um, I make a motion that town council approve the cancellation of the January 5th, 2022 regular meeting at council. Thank you for that. Any comments, questions, or concerns from council with that motion, Councilor Lynn? Well, that's a good idea because by the way we're going, we'll still be here by January 5th. <laughs> we've got almost nothing left on the agenda, so we're looking pretty good. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, just a question. If something were to come up and we had to have uh, an emergency meeting, we could still have the capacity to do that? Mr. Mayor, we're 24 hours now, so we can have a special meeting, absolutely. Yeah, no, I meant from the staff end of things. Oh, absolutely, Mr. Mayor. We're tied to the community, you know that? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I wasn't sure if people are going to be on vacation. Then Nobody's there. actually leaving the metropolitan area of Bruderheim, so we're okay. good. Thank you. Aren't you on holidays? Hmm? Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with the motion? I haven't heard none. Call for a vote. All those opposed? And the motion's carried. Now we move on to 8.8, .8. notice of motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At the November 17th meeting, um, there was a notice of motion to cost for RCMP services in small municipalities that uh, was directed to town council to prepare a letter for council to send to the government regarding costs for RCMP services and impact on small communities. And I'll let Councillor Filardo address this one. <coughs> Being common sense, we're paying far. We're, we just spent four hours on a budget over $500. This is like an $80,000 hit, folks. And then we weren't prepared for it. And then we got blindsided by the government on it. And I think we should. All, I, I had the opportunity to talk to several council members of, of various villages and towns in the past little while. They will support us 100%. It's killing every community in Alberta. The larger municipalities, when they put this in place, they were looking for themselves the way to download some of their costs into us. But as of working out, their costs of policing has went up just as much or more than ours. So it really is not advantageous to anybody in Alberta. And I think a strong letter to the minister and saying we we cannot afford this. And, uh, and I think uh, sending a copy of a letter to the other municipalities looking for their support. And I truly believe if we got together, this government has the history, if there's enough pressure and pushback, they will look at changing things. And, and it's not, I've been on this policing thing ever since it's been initiated. And I, I truly believe that we can't afford it, nor any other communities can afford it. And it's just a matter of a letter. It doesn't it'll be no cost to us other than the time of administration uh to uh do this and I, I truly believe we're going in the right direction community has to sometimes take leadership role in this and i i believe bruderheim is that community uh, like i said i talked to other communities and they truly think this is a good idea at this time the way things are going with the COVID and everything else and it's tend to maybe back down a little bit we give little pushback on it it, it doesn't hurt us if we, if we win, we get a reduction. If we don't, 
it doesn't change. So it's just a matter of making that attempt. If we don't try, we're not going to gain. Thank you very much. Councilor Lynn, you're making that motion. Yes. I make the motion that the council direct the administration to prepare a letter for the council sent to the government regarding costs for the RCM services and the impact on all small communities. Thank you for that motion. And please turn your mic off. Is there any comments, questions, or concerns? Councilor Wayne. What municipalities that you know of that would support us right now? Everybody in one Okay. Well, you said there's, you talked to many municipalities. Which, well, I'm sorry, that's what I'm asking. Which ones would support us is all? I don't have, I'm not going to at this time. It was a personal talk. Okay. But uh, I think it's a, it's a right direction. Okay. Thank you for that question. Any other comments, questions, or concerns from council with this motion? Deputy Mayor. I note I was at the AOMA when this got voted in and all small communities voted against it. And we got outvoted. It, it went to AUMA and every small community voted against it. So I'm, I, I, I know what you're saying. I just think we've been up that wall, that's all. This is a new wall. This is a new one? Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Judy. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with this motion? Councillor Dana? It doesn't hurt to uh, try again, I guess. It's, but you said it's, just, it's a letter that they just have put a little bit more time, like put more time in, but it's worth a shot. Thank you for that, Councillor Dana. How, how much time has the administration put into uh, preparing for this? The notice of motion? Yes. A couple hours, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And a couple hours to prepare the letter if it gets voted in? Yeah, we need some clear direction on that, Mr. Mayor. Are we just sending it from Bruderheim? Are we sending it to AUMA? Are we, where do you want this to go? The motion reads to prepare a letter for councils to send to the government. Yes. Um, to the government of Alberta? I would presume so, but uh, it's not in the motion. That's so, an incredible amount of work, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess we could get that from AMA, is that right? We could get a list of municipalities from AMA and um, I could contact AMA. To see what that process is to be able to send to all municipalities. Uh, we've never done it. I don't think we've ever done it, Mr. Mayor. So, um, uh, yeah, I'll look into it. <laughs> okay, so we're not sure on the time uh, involved in preparing that. Oh, it would be at least six hours for sure. By the time we contact AMA, um, prepare the letter, get signed, distribute to all the municipalities. Yeah. Okay, uh, Councillor Wayne and Councillor Dana. I think we've gone too long. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think if this is something that's going to go ahead, I think if you've already talked to municipalities, we can start with them. But I guess we need to know who it was first so we can start with them and then we can move forward if that's the choice. So it, I guess you're going to have to let either Patty know or admit no with those municipalities. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and we'll need an uh, um, amendment to the motion. Um, Councillor Dana. If we're talking about how much time it takes to do, how much time did it take to get all the documents put together for ATB? Like how many, how many hours did it take for you guys to do that? I, I'm not tracking my hours, so <laughs> sorry, I can't answer you right now. I don't know. Uh, so, Mr. Mayor, are we sending a letter saying that we don't want to pay? Or uh, what, what? I'm looking for an amendment from Councilor oh. Lynn. The letter is, uh, that's, uh, we don't feel we should pay. So let's word that properly. 
we feel that it's an in injustice to the small communities because it's causing a great hardship to us. And that's the bottom line in the letter. And I would like to see that letter go off to other communities asking for their support. And, and it's it just, it is a tremendous hardship to our community. $80,000, you look at that in our budget, we'll find, that's just about 10%. We'd have all those little extra pluses and stuff like that if we didn't have this policing. So at the cost, I mean, writing, I, we've done, look at the budget here, some of these things on there, I mean, spent hours on those articles there, one to 50, 21, to build them up. It's part of the budget. It's part of council. And, uh, and I think council has to take a, a leadership role in this. And I really, truly believe if we word it right, we don't have to, you know, like we're pouting or some, we we have to just declare it's a hardship, and it is a hardship to our community. It's a hardship to any other small community. Nobody has took that direction. As we said at the AUMA, there's not a small community supporting this, and right now a pushback is what we need to do, and that's my opinion on this. Thank you, Councillor Lynn. Is that sufficient information for the motion, Councillor George? When I look at the breakdown here, I see a couple of paragraphs. One is uh, MP Sharon, Sharon Stubbs issued a letter on November 25th, 2021, providing background information on recent ratification RCMP collective agreement and the potential of <clears throat> significant impact on the communities. Can you uh, give us some clarification, Patty? Um, uh, through Mayor Hope to Councillor Campbell, I sent out a letter um, that we received from uh, MP Stubbs. Um, recently, you probably heard in the news that some of the communities, even the larger communities, were appalled when they actually got information on their policing invoice. Um, there was a ratification of the RCMP collective agreement, and those costs were passed on to municipalities as a potential for paying. And Shannon Stubbs was um, alerting all municipalities in her riding um, that that was why they got those letters. So I just included in there as information uh, because that's another part of what the government is working with right now. Um, in the bottom of the um, information I prepared for you, there is a, a note saying that the AU May is working with municipalities and with the government trying to deal with this situation. Um, so it's ongoing, it's not over. Um, so I, I just included that part. So Mr. Mayor, as a point of clarification, so the RCMP hadn't got a um, COLA in over 10 years. And so that was settled, ratified, and that um, settlement was passed on to all municipalities over 5,000 because we weren't paying for policing before that. And those are significant numbers that were passed on, so. Hey, thank you, Councillor Wayne and then, uh, Deputy Mayor Judy. I think if we want to make this effective, instead of um, sending off a letter, I think it needs to go back to where it started from and bring it back as a motion to AMA or on behalf of small municipalities. Um, just, I think you get a better, you get more representation there than sending out letters and sending a letter to the government. Uh, let's see where it goes from there. So that'd be my suggestion. Thank you for that, uh, Deputy Mayor. And just so you've got an example of how well they're going to receive these letters. Hinton got a bill for $848,000. That's one town for policing retroactive pay. So when, so when we go back and say, we don't want to pay it, they're going to say, look at what the hell we're paying. That's why we're making you pay now. I, I, I realize what we're saying, but I'm not sure if we're going to get any impact because, because Hinton is not the only one. Every small town over 5,000, so Beggarville, Port Saskatchewan, like the different, the different ones didn't get up and tell us what their amounts was, but that particular counselor made it public, 848,000. We can't even imagine that, right? So when you touch that to their budget, they're in the same boat as us. Um, <clears throat> uh, hearing that information about the AUMA and um, the municipalities that are paying retro, so what's to stop uh, 
next year's AUME that they would push through a motion that municipalities under 5,000 then would be having to pay retro. So do we stir the mud up a little bit or do we leave it alone? Well, the contract's ratified now, so they're not gonna go retroactive pay, right? Because we were not in a contract to make any payments. So they can't make us pay back right on that, right? They're ratified, but if they don't, that's what happens when you don't keep up paying people and they unionize on you and then now they ratify backwards, right? So. Um, um, but I, I would tend to agree that through the AUMA, if we work with uh, Trina Jones is our Communities East rep, to try to get something on the floor for the next uh, AUMA next year. Uh, that's uh, probably has an opportunity to go somewhere, but it's up to the will of council. Any other comments, questions, or concerns on this motion? And we got sufficient information for the motion. Okay, and, and all those opposed to the motion. And the motion is not carried. Um, it's a potential that there could be a motion. And it's up to the will of council if someone would be willing to make that motion to see if we can bring something back to the AUMA, working through our contact on AUMA. Yeah, no, it's uh, Alberta municipalities. Yep. So that motion didn't carry. So is there another motion coming from council? On behalf of Councillor Carter here, her mic anyway, um, <laughs> uh, put a motion forward to um, bring this forward through our representative through AM um, and then look at bringing it forward to the AM GN meeting next year, I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah, so we'll have to work through that process. Mr. Mayor, can I do a friendly emotion amendment? Um, perhaps I could direct administration to contact AM and um, just talk about if there's some options and what their suggestion is. And of course, do what you say. But in addition to that, maybe um, they might have some options that I'm not aware of. So you're suggesting maybe a notice of motion? No, just a friendly amendment okay. to your motion, just to um, contact AMA to get it on the floor next year, as well as if there's any other opportunities to um, further that cause. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Wayne, are you open to a friendly amendment? Yep, to make them as a first point of contact. Thank you for that. Uh, Councilor George, you had your hand up. There's so many maybes here, like the, the new, uh, the possibility of the, uh, uh, of an incoming provincial police uh, force. Uh, um, so, uh, so many things that uh, have impacts on this uh, uh, policing requisition. We don't know what Kenny's going to do in the future with, with the uh, policing, or whether he's going to implement the, uh, provincial police and what it's going to cost us there. Uh, are we going to still be under the uh, RCMP or what? Just, just something. No, definitely there's some unknowns there. Uh, as was pointed out by Deputy Mayor Judy, um, the last count, at the last AUME that this was voted on, all of the small communities voted against having it and it still passed. So. Um, our council, as long as I've been on council, we've never pushed something through the AUMA in the past and now AM, but maybe it's time to try something and we'll, we'll see where it goes. Uh, Councillor Dana? Councillor Wayne? Yeah, I'm just saying if we're going to do something, I think we should start where it came from and um, to see if it's. Hello, to see if it even uh, a possibility or let's start with contacting AM and seeing where they recommend us going, if that's the will of council. Thank you. 
Any other comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Okay, call for a vote. Uh, anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. And we're moving on to, uh, I just wanted to thank uh, Councillor Land for bringing that notice of motion because it did percolate something that we can try. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, now we're at Council Committee reports looking for a motion from Council to receive the Council. Oh yeah, that's right. We've got 8.9 the Alberta Community Grant Application on Infrastructure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to present Council with information about the Alberta Community Partnership Grant application that administration would like to make application to. The Town Council directs administration to apply for the Alberta Community Partnership Grant for costs associated with the Regional Infrastructure Assessment Project. The Town works with a variety of agencies to gather supporting documentation for infrastructure needs and long-term planning for the Town of Bruderheim growth. When grants become available, Council can provide administration with guidance on the grants they wish to make an application for. This grant requires partnerships and administration will contact Lamont County for a letter of support. The Town of Bruderheim has an excellent background of regional collaboration on capital and long-term planning projects. The strategic plan area is an economic development strategy that is inclusive of business attraction and attention. Ensuring that regional infrastructure strategies continue to improve with regional development of business and industry, working with community partners to complete projects and new initiatives, a community that is educated on responsibilities and limitations of council administration, MJA chapter M26 section 2621 services or activities that are funded by agreement, Town Council is being asked to consider making application for the Alberta Community Partnership Grant to cover costs associated to conduct a regional infrastructure assessment that would involve roads, waters, and sewer and the remaining water reservoir design in support of future growth requirements, examples, annexation, developments, and subdivisions. The plan will provide critical information on issues related to setting priorities of regional infrastructure growth in the region and proactively developing infrastructure management strategies for growth impacting the municipalities. Council will receive updates on the grant application submission and any correspondence that it received from the government relating to its application. That's everything, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that. Um, accept that motion and look, um, <clears throat> accept that information. I'm looking for a motion, Councillor Wayne, and it's kind of The Town Council directs administration to apply for the Alberta Community Partnership Grant for costs associated with the Regional Infrastructure Assessment Project. Mr. Mayor, if I make an addition, that's a non matching grant. And non-matching grant, right? Okay. Um, any comments, questions, or concerns from council with this motion? What was the amount that we're applying for? Two hundred thousand, Mr. Mayor. Okay, and this is aiming towards. Mr. Mayor, things like our bridges, culverts, um, overland drainage. Um, just doing in-depth assessments. Um, we've had the assessment of where we think our priorities need to be. Now we actually need to take a deep dive into that infrastructure and uh, get actual costs to uh, maintain, fix, replace. Councilor Lynn? This grant for 200,000, is it a matching grant? No, it's non-matching, Mr. Mayor. So we don't have to come up with any funding ourselves? No, it, no, we don't. Because if there's any matching, it's not worth it. Then. No. Um, I think it's worth mentioning how we came about knowing about this grant, and that's through their... Um, Our engineering yeah. firm, yeah, they've hired a grant writer who used to work for Municipal Affairs, so she's pretty amazing, and um, she, she knew that I was concerned about our bridge, and I think we talked about the different levels of inspection at a previous meeting at our bridge, and the next inspection we need is, is a pretty expensive one, so I had mentioned, and she uh, found this one for us, so yeah. Thank you. That's why they get paid the big bucks. That is why our contracted services. Yes. Yep, so that one paid off. So uh, looking for any comments, uh, questions, concerns from council with this motion? Haven't heard none, call for vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So now we can do council committee reports. Uh, looking for a motion to receive the council committee reports as information, deputy mayor. Uh, I make a motion that town council receive council committee reports as information. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns from council with that motion? I haven't heard none. Call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Moving on to 9.2, mayor report. Uh, looking for a motion to receive the mayor report as information. Councilor George, I have a sign up. I'll make a motion that we receive the mayor's report as information as presented. <clears throat> Thank you for that, uh, uh, Councilor George. Um, 
at this time, the only thing that I have uh, to add that's not on my report is I had uh, gotten correspondence from someone that was looking to, it wasn't the hemp business, they were looking to maybe have a cannabis store in Bruderheim, and they were looking at a certain particular property, and I don't know what's going to come from that, we'll see, but um, that, that was interesting. Um, that's the only thing that I could add to the mirror report that's not in there, so um, thanks for that motion, Councillor George. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Sorry, George, can't hear you. The next meeting of the um, John Batuk meeting uh, committee is uh, January 13th. Thank you for that, Councillor George. And, Richard. and uh, there's uh, going to be a tour of the Northeast water distribution and the meeting afterwards. Yep, thank you for that, Councillor George. If there's no other comments, questions, or concerns with that motion, Call for a vote. Anyone opposed to that motion? And that motion's carried. Now we're looking for a motion for the CAO report. Councilor Wayne. Make a motion that Councilor receive the CAO report as information. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Councilor Wayne. Um, StarTech did some work on the ice plants, right? Is that warranted or is that, do you know? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Lecker, I don't, sorry, I'll have to find out. I don't think it was. Uh, I think Simcoe put the plant in and they were helping us out with something, but I will triple check. Thank you. Thank you for that. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with the CAO report from Council? Last one of the year. Great job. Thank you. Um, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Uh, no closed session. Uh, we need a motion to accept the correspondence and information items as listed. Deputy Mayor. Uh, I make a motion that Town Council accept the listing of correspondence and information items of, for the period of November 26, 2021 to December 10th, 2021 as information. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns from Council with this motion? And hearing none, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Now we just need one more motion. Councillor Wayne. If I may, can I just make, ask a question? Yeah. Go ahead, <laughs> Councillor Wayne. Um, I should have brought this up earlier and I, I totally forgot about it, but it was asked if um, when it's icy and, and a big snow load comes down, if at 560 and 205, um, 205 going south, if it can be either sanded, if it's icy, or cleared out a bit so the bus can turn around, because it can, it, apparently it can't back, it can back into it, but it can't, it can go one way, but not the other, because it can't back into traffic onto a major, onto 560, I guess, and it has issues if it's icy and snowy. Is that a possibility? Um, Sherry's been dealing with uh, Elk Island Transport Services, so could they direct that through them? that request. They've just asked us to streamline. We've been getting calls from a number of parents with concerns, residents that don't even have children, bus drivers, and there seems to be a confusion. If they could just put that through their bus supervisor, whoever that may be, that would be great. Not that we won't. It's just they've asked us to. Yeah, it was apparent and I can I can address it that way. That's yeah, yeah, the bus drivers are saying they're not saying that. And yeah, there seems to be some confusion there. So thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Wayne, and we're looking for a motion. I make a motion to go home to bed, not a couch. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Thank you. Good job, everybody.